Welcome to Fanfiction Audiobook. I'm in American Comics Traveling Frogs Bring Back the Emperor's Armor. Chapter 1. Marvel World. Inside a luxurious residence. The frog cub is going on a trip. The frog cub will send back travel photos from time to time, please pay attention to check it. The return of the frog cub will bring back special products and special souvenirs during the trip, please remember to check it out. Sitting on the high-end sofa, Luo Feng couldn't help but smile when he heard the voice in his head, finally going out for a trip. Two days ago, he traveled to this very dangerous Marvel world. Although he inherited a considerable legacy as an orphan, he still has a luxurious residence in the heart of New York City. But Luo Feng, who is familiar with Marvel's plot, knows very well that if he doesn't have enough strength in the Marvel world, this considerable legacy is really about to become a legacy. The group of God-killing superhero fights, but they don't care about the safety of civilians, lives and property. It's all done after the fight is over. God knows if it will be that day when he is sleeping comfortably. There was a man who smashed in from the balcony. Fortunately, Luo Feng, who is a transmigrator, also successfully awakening Goldfinger. What Luo Feng didn't expect was that his Goldfinger turned out to be a very popular mini-game, Traveling Frog, that he played in his previous life. The gameplay is also very simple. The player has a little frog who likes to travel, and only needs to prepare the luggage for the frog. The little frog will travel far and wide, and then bring back all kinds of souvenirs and special products as gifts for the owner. But now, the game has changed a lot. The basic gameplay has not changed, but the place where the little frog travels has become the heavens and the world. It can be the world in the novel, the movie universe, the anime world, etc. That is to say, the special products and souvenirs brought back by the little frog will be the products of various dimensional worlds. And more importantly, Luo Feng can use these things directly. This also makes Luo Feng look forward to what kind of gifts the frog cub can bring back to him on the first stop of his trip. After a day of waiting, this is the little frog who was named, Frog Cub, and finally went on a trip. I don't know what kind of world travel to go back to. I hope I can bring back some items to enhance my strength. Otherwise, living in this peaceful New York City would always feel a little apprehensive. Looking at the game cabin in his mind, Luo Feng muttered in his heart. Just then, the alarm clock set aside rang. Luo Feng looked at the time. Time to go to class. Today is school day. Although he is a transmigrator, he is essentially a college student who has just grown up. Also a transfer student to Imperial State University. I wonder if I will meet little Spider-Man. Luo Feng muttered while holding his school bag. But on second thought it seems unlikely. In the past two days, in addition to waiting for the frog cub to travel, Luo Feng also read the information of several important people. Tony is still working as an arms dealer, and he's in a daze. Captain America is still in the historical record. The Hulk has yet to appear in the public eye. That said, the Marvel Universe doesn't seem to have started yet. Imperial State University. New York City's premier university. Today is the school day, and a banner hangs at the school gate. Many well-dressed female students in the student union welcomed new students at the door. And Luo Feng, who just arrived, is naturally welcome. Although he is familiar with Marvel's plot. But that doesn't mean Luo Feng is familiar with the environment. In addition, the predecessor also just transferred to this university. I don't know anything about the school environment. Know what class you have today and which classroom to go to but don't know how to go. Just when Luo Feng was about to ask a student from the student union. A young and beautiful voice sounded behind him. Hey, this classmate, is there anything I can help you with? Luo Feng turned his head to look, and saw a blonde girl with a good figure and three-dimensional features standing behind him holding a stack of books. Hello, I'm Gwen Stacy. When Gwen saw Luo Feng turn her head, her beautiful eyes moved when she saw this well-behaved Chinese classmate. He is so handsome. After hearing Gwen's self-introduction, look at Gwen again. Luo Feng immediately understood, isn't this Gwen Stacy, one of little Spider-Man's two girlfriends? But, is there something wrong with the timeline and the plot? Logically speaking, in this world Tony hasn't become Iron Man yet. Gwen and Peter Parker shouldn't be in college by now, right? Although there were doubts in his mind, 
Luo Feng politely stretched out a hand to shake Gwen. Um, very soft and slippery. Hello, my name is Luo Feng. Luo Feng. Gwen thought about it for a while, and then immediately said excitedly, You are the new transfer student from our class, right? The tutor told me about your situation two days ago, and let me show you the school. I didn't expect to meet you here. Luo Feng also said with a smile, it's a coincidence. Would you like to show me around the school and then take me to the class? It was a coincidence that even Luo Feng himself did not expect to be in the same class as Gwen. Definitely. Gwen took advantage of Luo Feng's courtesy and replied playfully. Along the way, Gwen enthusiastically introduced the environment of the State University to Luo Feng. There's the library over there, the gym over there. I think we should continue to visit the campus next time. Because it's almost time for class. Luo Feng shook the watch in his hand. Gwen smiled and said, Don't worry, Luo Feng, the direction we are going is the classroom. I'm just going to introduce you to the scenery along the way. Definitely, if you want to continue shopping next time, I'll be more than happy to introduce it to you. Luo Feng also returned with a smile. I also really need a beautiful tour guide. This sentence Luo Feng is from the heart, and Gwen is one of the few good-looking female characters in Marvel. Gwen blushed. Look, our classroom is just ahead. Inside the classroom. After the tutor gave a brief introduction to Luo Feng, who had just transferred, he started a boring day of class. During the get out of class, Gwen will come over enthusiastically and tell Luo Feng that he can come to him if he doesn't understand anything. Then leave the classroom. As the school's student leader, Gwen has other things to do besides class. But Luo Feng's class today is full. Luo Feng was speechless, never expected to be a transmigrator. Still have to go to school. The lectures in class made him sleepy. Strange, why doesn't it seem like this school doesn't have Peter Parker? Luo Feng was puzzled. Logically, Gwen showed up, and there was no reason why Peter Parker didn't show up. It seems that this Marvel Universe is different from the story of the Marvel Universe that I know. But it's easy to explain. The grandeur of the Marvel Universe goes beyond just a few movies. At the same time, inside the State University Biological Laboratory, a middle-aged doctor frowned and prepared the green biological medicine in front of him. Around the laboratory, there are specimens of various reptiles. It looks very intimidating. The strange thing is that his right arm clothes are empty and tied with a knot. This doctor broke an arm, almost all students in the State University know. Kurt Connors, a research PhD in reptile biological regeneration systems. Looking at the reaction of the biological reagents in the test tube, Dr. Connors exhaled in disappointment, Peter. Peter Parker, his assistant and student. Here I am, Dr. Connors. In the corner, a young man walked out with the test material in his hand, with a smile on his face. Looking at Peter's smile, Connors' failed experiment seemed to be affected a little. You seem to be very happy. Peter smiled shyly. Maybe it's because school starts today. Dr. Connors understood and raised his eyebrows, seeing Gwen again. Then today's test data has to be accelerated. You will have time to invite this beautiful female classmate to have a meal with you later. No, Dr. Connors. Today is the day for freshmen to enter, and she is relatively busy. And I think, she shouldn't accept my invitation. After all, I'm just an ordinary student. And she's so, excellent. Dr. Connors didn't say much when he saw Peter's dejected expression. He is a good student everywhere, very excellent. Only a little bad. That is self-pity. Thinking of his family environment, Dr. Connors could only sigh slightly, and then said, don't worry, we will wait for the success of our research on this project. You will no longer be an ordinary student, and then you can boldly do what you want to do. I understand, Dr. Connors. Record this test. It still failed. After speaking, Dr. Connors walked to the side chair in disappointment and slumped down. Out of the corner of his eyes, he couldn't help but look at the empty right arm. Peter didn't say anything, but recorded the test data by himself. Inside the classroom, Luo Feng chatted in every possible way and turned his pen. The eyelids were fighting, but I couldn't sleep. I have been thinking about my little frog. The frog cub has gone to that world. We'll bring something back. This stupid child doesn't know how to send a photo back. I don't know if the owner is worried. Until the end of school. 
The reminder sound in his mind sounded slowly. Beep. The frog cub is back. The frog cub brought you a travel specialty, come and have a look. In an instant, Luo Feng came to the spirit. Finally home. And the bell for the last class rang at the right time. Luo Feng hurriedly cleaned up the things on the table. Ready to go home. Suddenly, someone tapped Luo Feng on the shoulder behind him. Luo Feng subconsciously came back to his senses and saw Gwen wearing a long white dress standing behind him. The long skirt gathered Gwen's figure in a concave and convex shape. It made the other male students in the class look hot. Student Luo Feng, there is a welcome party for new students tonight, do you want to join us? By the way, we still have extra time to walk around the campus. Gwen warmly invited. Freshman party. Why haven't you heard of it yourself? Gwen immediately explained, we will inform you that you are welcome to enter the freshman year. You are a transfer student, so I don't know. Luo Feng nodded, not wanting to go to such a boring party. And compared to this party, there are more important things to do now. Student Gwen, you know that I just moved to New York and I have a lot to deal with. Next time I invite you to dinner, you will take me around the campus. Gwen's eyes were lost for a while, this was the first time she had been rejected by a boy. Although she had been asked by boys before, she was rejected. Gwen continued, that's a deal. I prefer steak. Okay, it's a deal. After speaking, Luo Feng picked up his school bag and ran out of the classroom. A woman or something will only affect my relationship with the frog cub. After half an hour, Luo Feng got off the taxi and went downstairs. The taxi driver stuck his head out and looked curiously. You really live here? Luo Feng smiled. Definitely. Another rich man. The taxi driver scolded and walked away. Back home. The sun has gone down. Luo Feng immediately opened the game in his mind. The game interface immediately pops up several prompt boxes. All just tips. Luo Feng clicked off the first few prompt boxes. In the last tooltip, a small item icon appears. This is the special product that frog cubs bring back after their trip. The icon is small, but it is not difficult to see that it is a golden belt. When Luo Feng saw the belt, his heartbeat couldn't help speeding up. No. Frog Cub didn't really bring me back something like that. Luo Feng clicked the belt icon, and the information bar automatically appeared. Emperor's Belt. The world's specialty of, armored warriors, the strongest armored emperor armor summoner. After wearing it, it can summon the emperor's armor of light. It's really the emperor's armor summoning belt. Luo Feng was stunned. I didn't expect that the special product brought back by the frog cub for the first time was actually such a powerful thing. Emperor Armor. The top existence in the light and shadow armor. Even if a child is summoned, with his instinctive fighting consciousness, he can smash the ancient four evils to the ground. And the most important thing is the following sentence, no blood requirements. It means that as long as he wears it, he can be summoned, and there are no such harsh summoning conditions. Holding back his excitement, Luo Feng immediately took action. Click on the item column page, there are four small columns of bento, item, amulet, and specialty. Luo Feng clicked on specialties. A lifelike belt icon appears in the specialties column. Click the belt icon, and the game prompt pops up again. Are you extracting the special product emperor's belt? Yes. Luo Feng said silently in his heart. In an instant, Luo Feng felt his hands sink. Looking down, a silver box appeared in his hand. This box contains the emperor's belt that can summon the emperor's armor. Luo Feng couldn't wait to put the box on the table. Pat. With a crisp sound, the box opened. The golden belt body lay quietly inside the box. Luo Feng took it out of the box, and when his hand touched the emperor's belt, the two seemed to resonate. The body of the belt flashed golden light. Luo Feng's eyes also flashed a golden light. This is the approval of the emperor's armor. Luo Feng immediately buckled the emperor's belt around his waist, and then said lightly, the emperor's armor. Combined. A burst of golden light rushed from the five element spar on the belt, wrapping Luo Feng's body. The golden light was solid, and a golden and silver armor covered Luo Feng's body. There was also a unique reminder sound in the void, armor fit. The moment the armor fit together, Luo Feng felt that there seemed to be an inexhaustible amount of power constantly emerging. 
Luo Feng walked slowly to the mirror and looked at himself in the mirror. The incomparably domineering emperor's armor covers his entire body. However, it did not affect Luo Feng's ability to act and perceive. On the contrary, Luo Feng at the moment's perception has become extremely powerful. In the whole house, even a flying fly can be perceived clearly. It seems that I'm still not strong enough. The emperor's armor is still only at the elementary level. Luo Feng looked at the emperor's armor in the mirror. There is no aurora shield on the chest. But Luo Feng is not in a hurry, just follow his own training and the special products brought back by the frog cub. It's only a matter of time before the ultimate emperor armor is summoned. And that cooled to the extreme emperor dragon. Now, Luo Feng wants to do one more thing. Before coming to the balcony, Luo Feng jumped for the rest of his life. The whole person rose to the sky in an instant. The emperor armor can fly. Woohoo. Yay. In the air, Luo Feng was flying happily. The bustling New York City below is getting smaller and smaller, only a few stars remain. At this moment, Luo Feng also experienced the feeling of flying to the sky for the first time when Tony created the Iron Man battle suit. This feeling of freedom is really cool. Just when Luo Feng was flying freely. An ultra-luxury building by the sea, built along a cliff by the sea, as if it had grown naturally on the cliff. And at the moment, the building was dark and blazing. There was only a burst of joyful sounds from one room. Playboy Tony lay on the bed with a blonde on him who even he forgot about his profession. The only thing I remember is that she was in good shape, so she took it home. This is the everyday life of Tony Stark, Playboy, sole heir to the Stark business. Just as Tony was enjoying it, an untimely voice sounded, Sir, an unknown flight object has appeared over New York City, and the speed is very fast. The blonde on Tony was startled and rolled off Tony. She looked around in fear. Why is there a sound all of a sudden? It was still a man's voice. Could it be that this playboy in front of him has any special XP? What? J-A-R-V-I-S, you don't need to report this trivial matter to me. Maybe it is a newly developed weapon by those people in Jun. But don't worry, their weapons are no match for mine. Tony said proudly. As a genius in developing weapons, he is confident that no one on this planet can surpass him. Even his dad. The man who created Captain America. Neither can Howard Stark. Come on. He's just my AI housekeeper J-A-R-V-I-S, you know it stops halfway through. It would disgust me. Tony said to the blonde beside him. Hearing Tony's explanation, the blonde immediately relieved herself and said softly, I don't like half doing things either. Just sitting on Tony, ready to continue. After relying on his excellent artificial intelligence analysis, J-A-R-V-I-S still said, Sir, I still recommend you to take a look. The blonde now knew about J-A-R-V-I-S, and not only wasn't frightened. Instead, I felt a different kind of stimulation. Tony didn't care about J-A-R-V-I-S's operation and let J-A-R-V-I-S open a light curtain in front of him. Inside the light curtain, a golden humanoid figure was flying freely. This time, Tony was restless. Pushing the blonde away from him. What is this, J-A-R-V-I-S? I don't know, but it seems to be some kind of mecha weapon. Enlarge. The picture of flight is instantly frozen. Under the operation of J-A-R-V-I-S, the Emperor's armor was quickly modeled in 3D in front of Tony. That domineering outfit. Rao is a genius and conceited, Tony couldn't help but exclaimed. Oh my god. On the sea. A search of the jet black aircraft carrier stopped here. Like a giant steel beast, crawling on the sea. From a distance, it looks very intimidating. Inside the aircraft carrier, countless electronic sounds echoed back and forth, and every corner of the beautiful country was beating on the screen. Even something from an enemy country. On a high platform, a one-eyed bald black man stood on it wearing a black cloak. He looked indifferently at the operator below. On the wall behind them, an eagle-shaped sign stands. This is the largest agent organization in the beautiful country, S.H.I.E.L.D. And standing at the top is the S.H.I.E.L.D. director, Maha Fake Man, Nick Fury. His duty is to stifle all hidden dangers in the cradle. But in fact, to put it bluntly, it is nothing more than a weapon used by the superior to wield it at will. Just as Nick Fury was looking at the monitor attentively, the capable-looking Hill agent behind him was holding a monitor tablet in his hand. 
hastily ran to the podium. Director, I suggest you take a look at this. Is there anything more important than me forming the Avengers' plan? Nick Fury said. As one of his confidants, the Hill agent was aware of Nick Fury's plan. But so far, no suitable candidates have been found. I think this will be the first person in your plan. The Hill agent hands Nick Fury the monitor. Nick Fury casually took over the monitor from the Hill agent. He had seen too many talented people during this time. But they couldn't get into his eyes. Most of them are still mutants. Considering the delicate relationship between mutant and ZF, even if their ability is strong, Nick Fury has to choose carefully. The Avengers he wants to assemble must be single-minded in doing practical things, without two hearts. Fight to protect humanity. The experience in his youth made him understand that there is more than one race of human beings in the vast universe. So Avengers had to be built. Nick Fury glanced at the image on the monitor and his pupils shrank. When did this happen? Just now. Hill Agent replied. Are there any clear images? Hill Agent shook his head and continued. The speed is too fast, our satellite can only capture blurry images. But after going through the technical frame restoration, I still got a photo. Hill Agent's hand slipped, and a photo appeared on the monitor. I saw in the photo, a set of golden armor and golden light sword in the sky like a soaring dragon. Is this a mutant? Or a technological force? Can you find out the other party's location? Nick Fury was suddenly interested. We are fully monitoring. By the way, where is Dr. Banner? The Hill Agent said immediately, has escaped from the laboratory and is now missing. The people from Jun Fang seem to have got Dr. Banner's blood. Nick Fury nodded. Follow this first. Yes. Heaven. Luo Feng flew for a while before the excitement subsided a lot. Ready to go back. If you go back, try this skill. Luo Feng put one hand on the belt and said softly, transform shadow. In an instant, Luo Feng disappeared in place. Nick Fury. What? Tony. What? The two people who were not in the same place made the same shocked expression at the same time. In their satellite surveillance, the golden armor evaporated like air without a trace. How to investigate this? Investigate shit. Nothing is left. But the two of them will not give up because of this. Fully mobilize the resources in your hands to find this short-lived armor. But the goals of the two are different. What Tony was thinking was, spend money. No matter how much money, let the other party sell this amazing technology to him. And Nick Fury wants to empty the gloves and White Wolf. As long as the other party has a good character, he will directly pull the other party such as Avengers. Groan. The next second after activating, transformation. Luo Feng appeared in his home, and the Emperor's armor on his body turned into a little golden light and dissipated. Back in the belt. It seems that there will be an exercise plan next. After the armor fit just now, Luo Feng also got a lot of information from the Emperor's armor. As long as it is enhanced in terms of strength and psychic power. In the future, the Emperor's armor can be summoned, and it can even be summoned directly without a belt. Luo Feng is still looking forward to that day. After all, no one wants to run around with a suitcase all day long. Can the special products that are taken out be put back in the baby? Do it when you think of it. Luo Feng's mind moved and opened the game interface again. The chest with the Emperor's belt in his hand. Deposit. Will the Emperor's belt be stored in the Frog Kit's room? Luo Feng's face is full of joy, it's really possible. Yes. The next moment, I saw the Frog Cub standing at the door blowing wind in the game screen. Suddenly there was a small suitcase in his hand. Then the frog cub took the suitcase and entered his small room. Then, above the small room where there was no operation, there was an additional box icon. Luo Feng clicked the icon. On the pop-up inventory interface, you have your own emperor belt. Doesn't this mean that I will have a portable space in the future? Luo Feng looked at the silly frog cub and liked it more and more. With a thought, he opened the frog cub's backpack. Get your luggage ready for your next trip. After the first trip, at the moment Frog Cub's little backpack was empty. The only thing left is to get a permanent item after completing the novice tutorial, the four-leaf clover amulet. How many things are prepared in the backpack and whether they are good or bad. Determines the number of days the Frog Cubs appear to travel. In theory, the longer you travel outside, the more souvenirs and specialties you will get. 
After only going out for a day, I brought back the emperor armor. Luo Feng felt that it was necessary to upgrade the frog cub with some equipment and food. In this case, maybe I can bring back something better next time. We are not greedy, and we don't say how good we bring back. Just get some peerless inheritance, supreme artifact, these small objects. Luo Feng thought happily while opening the game store. Here, there are a dazzling array of props that the frog cubs need to travel to the heavens. In the store, various items are clearly classified. Bento, amulets, props. In the game, different bentos, amulets, and props will bring different effects. It will have an impact on the places to travel, as well as the specialties and souvenirs brought back by the frog cubs. The currency used in the store is the game-exclusive clover. The clover can be harvested in the pond just outside the door of the frog cub. With the novice mission and Luo Feng's cutting in the past two days, the balance of the clover is more than 500. Luo Feng took a look and spent 50 clovers to buy a luxurious bento for the frog cub. To know the cheapest bento, all you need is 10 shamrocks. Immediately afterwards, Luo Feng gritted his teeth and bought the frog cub a red scarf that increased his luck value for 200 clover. The scarf, like the lucky charm, is a permanent item. Although it cost 200, Luo Feng felt that it was not too bad. If it costs 200 at a time, Luo Feng can't afford the money now. Put the purchased things into the frog cub's backpack in turn. The preparations for the frog cub's next trip are also done. The frog cub who got the bento went back to his room to eat. Looking at the silly frog cub eating, Luo Feng smiled like an old father. Cuckoo. Luo Feng left the game interface, and protests came from his stomach. After all, using the emperor's armor is also very physical. Picked up some ingredients in the refrigerator. Made two standard Chinese dishes. After dinner. Luo Feng meditated and practiced according to the inheritance information obtained from the emperor's armor. This kind of cultivation, the greater is to improve the strength of the mind. As for physical strength, you need to exercise. Luo Feng's mind soon fell silent. Time flies fast. The prompt of the system sounded vaguely. The frog cub is going on a trip. The next morning, Luo Feng washed up refreshed, picked up his school bag and went to school. A night of practice, not only will Luo Feng not feel tired, on the contrary, it will make him feel more comfortable than ever. Even vaguely feel that his six senses have strengthened a little. Very subtle. Luo Feng likes this feeling very much. In a good mood, I took a car and drove in the direction of the school. Taking a taxi again, Luo Feng's desire to buy a car became stronger. Because NYC taxis are really uncomfortable to sit in. Although his inheritance allows him to buy an ordinary mobility scooter. However, Luo Feng has a better car buying plan in his heart. It's just that the time has not yet come. But he had a hunch that it should be soon. Taxis came quickly to the door of the state university. When Luo Feng got out of the car and walked towards the campus, a shout came from behind him, Luo Feng. Hearing this familiar voice, Luo Feng turned around with a smile, Hi, Gwen. Gwen trotted all the way to Luo Feng and said excitedly, You didn't come yesterday, we had a good time. It's a pity to miss it, there should be a chance next time. Luo Feng said with regret. Just as the two were chatting, a police car drove towards the two and rolled down the window. A middle-aged man with blonde hair stuck his head out and looked at Gwen and Luo Feng. Gwen's face immediately stiffened. A little embarrassed, he said, Luo Feng, let me introduce you to my father, George Stacy. Dad, this is a new classmate from our school, Luo Feng. Nice to meet you, Luo Feng. George held out his hand. Luo Feng immediately understood what was going on, shook hands and said, Hello, Mr. Stacy. This is Gwen's dad and the chief of the NYPD. At the same time, he is also a madwoman, and occasionally sends his daughter to school. On the surface, it is to send his daughter to school, but in fact, it is to warn those students who have bad feelings towards his daughter not to mess around. Whenever Gwen and the other male classmates approached, George would go up and mingle. For nothing else, I am afraid that my daughter will be hurt outside. It also made Gwen a little annoyed by her old father. I trotted all the way just now, just because I didn't want him to find himself greeting Luo Feng. Unexpectedly, it was discovered. 
Facing George's sharp eyes, Luo Feng faced each other without dodging or avoiding. George, who has many years of experience in catching criminals, can almost see the thoughts of many people at a glance. But Luo Feng in front of him gave him a hard time. His eyes were pure and he seemed to be a very innocent child. Am I thinking too much? Looks like my daughter has made a good friend. Luo Feng replied with a smile, it should be my honor to know Gwen. She has helped me a lot. Gwen on the side was stunned. It was the first time she saw her father speak so highly of a stranger. At this time, the radio on the police car sounded, there is a robbery in the back alley, please rush to support the nearby police officers. George sighed and said, looks like I'm in a bit of trouble, I have to go first. Goodbye, Dad. Gwen was instantly happy. Luo Feng also said, call again, Mr. Stacy. George, who was about to drive away, then said, Gwen, remember to go home for dinner tonight, your mother wants to show her cooking skills tonight. Okay, Dad. After saying that, he glanced at Luo Feng intentionally or unintentionally and drove away. Seeing George leave, Gwen looked at Luo Feng excitedly. Luo Feng, my father has never commented on a person like this. Really? Then I'm quite lucky. The two walked into the campus chatting and laughing. To others, it seems like a couple. Not far from the school gate. Peter Parker was carrying a school bag, watching Gwen's retreating back, and at the same time looking at Luo Feng. Gwen, is that the new transfer student from your class? There was a glint of jealousy in his eyes. Then his expression became inferior again, and when he thought about his own family background, he thought about Gwen's family background. Peter felt like he couldn't. He and Gwen are good friends. But it also stopped at the stage of good friends. As long as my research with Dr. Connors makes progress, I can invite you to have a meal with me. Peter's eyes were firm and he walked in the direction of the Connors Biological Laboratory. By the sea, Tony's house. The blonde woke up from her slumber. Although the previous experience last night was not very pleasant, Tony also regrouped and did it again. Tony. There was no Tony at the bedside. She could only walk out of the room half wrapped in a thin shirt. As soon as she walked out of the room, she was shocked by the sea view that was introduced into her eyes. Is this the life of the richest man? Love love, will I be able to live here in the future? Sure enough, you don't need to be talented, you can live a good life with a figure and good looks. The blonde glanced proudly at her figure. It was with this body that she became prosperous in this cannibalistic society. Now it is even the richest man. Just as she was secretly giggling, a mature female voice came from behind her. The clothes have been ironed for you, and the car has been called. It's just outside, where you want to go, we'll take you there. The blonde turned around and saw a mature woman in smart workwear standing behind her. In his hand he was still holding the clothes he wore yesterday. The blonde immediately recognized the woman in front of her, Virginia Pepper Potts, Mr. Tony Stark's assistant. She can often be seen attending many social meetings and TV stations. With his capable acting style, he was nicknamed, Little Pepper, under Tony's ridicule. The blonde saw that there was nothing like her own little chili pepper, and yet she had been able to work by Tony's side for so long. The sense of comparison in my heart suddenly rose, and I said proudly, you must be the famous Miss Pepper Potts. Yes, it's me. It's been all these years and Tony has you doing the dry cleaning for him. Little Pepper can see at a glance that the blonde in front of her is demonstrating to her, and she has no trouble in her heart. Even a little laugh. But he said calmly, I do whatever Mr. Stark wants me to do. Occasionally including taking out the trash. There is nothing else. The blonde was instantly angry, but under Chili Pepper's aura, there was nothing she could do. Can only take the clothes and leave in despair. I'll see you next time I meet Tony. But what she didn't know was that Tony wouldn't eat a piece of cake twice. Pepper watched the blonde leave, turned and walked towards the basement. From what she knew about Tony, she must be tinkering with something in the basement factory by now. Hey, what are you doing over there? Just when little Pepper was about to go to the basement, Tony, who came downstairs, asked with a strange expression on his face. Xiao Chili also turned around with a puzzled face. Aren't you modifying your car at this time? It was before, but now there are more important things. More important things. Pepper looked puzzled. Tony was no exaggeration in Stark Industries to say he was the boss. 
important things he said. Wouldn't it be a model from another newspaper or TV station or which company? Tony, I think the more important thing right now is that you're flying to the other side of the world to negotiate a business. Little Pepper reminded while holding the document in his arms. It's all about Tony's schedule. No, no, that doesn't matter. Our own plane, we can leave when we want. Even if I'm late, they have to wait. Tony said arrogantly. Rich and talented. It is willful. Then what are the more important things you're talking about? Look at this. Tony's hand slid over the tablet in his hand. A huge amount of projection screen appeared in the center of the hall. On the screen, it was Luo Feng who was photographed by the Stark Industrial Satellite when he was in Yunyu last night. What is this? Pepper looked at the Emperor's armor that was analyzed by JARVIS, and couldn't understand what Tony meant by putting this clip. I do not know either. But I have a feeling that if I can get this technology, the Stark military industry will be at its peak. At the moment, Tony put more focus on selling arms. Where is he then? Little Pepper asked. Don't know, tune to monitor display according to JARVIS. The place where this mecha first appeared was in the 13th block of New York City, and I've asked Happy to investigate. Pepper, I think you should help me investigate too. Use your connections in the company. Okay. Tony. But now you have to go before it's too late. Little Pepper is not interested in these, but she will do it naturally if Tony ordered it. Tony spread his hands helplessly. Okay. J-A-R-V-I-S, bring my car over. Okay, sir. I think Rhodes should have been waiting on the side of the plane for a long time. See you tonight. What Tony didn't know was that this trip to the Middle East would completely change his life. See you tonight. Pepper shook his hand. And pretty much the same scene. Also happened on the Shield Mothership. As one of Nick Fury's left and right arms. Phil Phil Coulson agent arrived in New York City's 13th block early in the morning. Inside a black car, Phil Coulson looked around in a black suit and sunglasses. Does that cool, explosive, mysterious mecha really come from this neighborhood? The 13th block of New York City, although not as central as the downtown area, is populated by a large number of rich people. But the people who live here are also the middle class with small wealth. At the same time, another fat figure on the street caught his attention. That fat man, like him, was wearing a black suit and black sunglasses. Sitting in the corner of a cafe. With a cup of coffee in hand, Phil Coulson's attention was drawn to the look of flinching and looking around. That guy seems to be, Tony Stark's security, Happy Hogan. What is he doing here? Could it be that? Phil Coulson immediately thought of the reason, and immediately dialed a number on a special cell phone. Hello, Director Nick Fury. Phil Coulson, have you found the person I'm looking for? No, but Tony Stark's security is here, and I suspect they saw the mech yesterday as well. And then, Phil Coulson, and then, Phil Coulson froze, right. And then, it seems that this has nothing to do with him looking for a mecha. Nick Fury on the other end of the phone said softly, if you can't find it, you can stay in the 13th block. Beep. Afternoon. State University. As the last get-out-of-class bell rang, Luo Feng slowly stood up from the desk, picked up his school bag and was ready to go home. Early after school today, Luo Feng wanted to go shopping around to see if there were any shops selling fitness equipment. Buy some for home workouts. Gwen, who had been sitting behind him, immediately stood up. Walking to Luo Feng's side, he said, I think you shouldn't be in a hurry tonight, right? How do you know? Luo Feng laughed. Because you are very slow to collect things today. Luo Feng looked at her with a smile, making Gwen a little embarrassed. He quickly explained, it happens that I am free now, so I can show you more about the campus. By the way, I'll give you a chance to fulfill yesterday's promise. But your father didn't say that in the morning, your mother made delicious food for you to eat at home. He does it all the time, actually my mother rarely cooks. Gwen laughed. That's all right, a beautiful lady like you invites me, and of course I have no reason to refuse. You rejected me yesterday. There was a hint of displeasure in Gwen's tone. This made Luo Feng's face embarrassed. It turns out that girls are so vengeful. He quickly changed the subject and said, then let's go to the campus first, before it's too late. Otherwise you won't be able to eat steak. Hearing that Luo Feng still remembered the steak he promised yesterday, Gwen smiled, let's go then. 
The state university occupies a very small area. Luo Feng followed Gwen around for nearly an hour, the sun slowly went down, and it was almost the end of the entire state university. It also made Luo Feng sigh for a while. It is indeed the number one university in New York City. All facilities are complete. Covers a variety of laboratories in different fields of science and technology. Gwen, what kind of experiment is that over there? Luo Feng saw that a laboratory was relatively new compared to other experiments he had seen along the way. And special. Because of other laboratories, they often have three or four floors. Only there is a bungalow. It looks a bit out of tune with the surrounding buildings. Dr. Connors Reptile Laboratory over there. Dr. Connors. Hearing this familiar name, Luo Feng had a faint guess. Could it be that Dr. Connors, who researched the regeneration of severed limbs and finally became a lizard monster? Yes, Dr. Connors used to be an excellent field doctor, but lost his right arm in a KB attack. He then took a back seat and started biological research. He came to State University two years ago and set up the reptile laboratory. After listening to Gwen's introduction, Luo Feng was sure that he was Dr. Connors who would become a lizard man in the future. We're all here, let's go. Let's go in. I'll introduce you to a good friend, he's a genius. Seeing Gwen's appearance, Luo Feng had already guessed the identity of her good friend nine times out of ten. Future Spider-Man Peter Parker. Luo Feng followed in Gwen's footsteps and stepped into Dr. Connor's laboratory together. Push the door and enter. What catches the eye is a variety of glass cabinets that house the reptiles of today's world. Some Luo Feng called by name, and some he couldn't. And Gwen, who was a girl, seemed to be surprised by everything around her, and walked towards the interior of the laboratory. Soon, the two of them saw two figures in white coats standing in front of the test bench attentively. In the cage in front of the two was a little white rabbit whose front limbs had been amputated. One of the younger guys was holding a syringe with a green liquid in it. I don't know if it's a drug or what. Peter, are you ready? No problem, Dr. Connors. The brief conversation immediately allowed Luo Feng to identify the two. They're doing important experiments, let's leave them alone. Gwen whispered in Luo Feng's ear. Luo Feng nodded. He was also curious about whether the tube of genetic medicine in Peter's hand could really regenerate this rabbit's severed limbs. I saw Peter holding his breath, inserted the syringe into the rabbit's vein, and then pushed a whole tube of medicine into the rabbit's body. After doing this, the two carefully observed the rabbit's reaction. Ten minutes later, the rabbit still did not respond. Gwen also lost patience, and when he was about to go up to say hello, Luo Feng grabbed Gwen. Wait, that rabbit seems to have changed. After cultivating spiritual power, Luo Feng's perception has surpassed that of ordinary people. He could feel something that seemed to really take place in the rabbit's body. Can't say good or bad. In fact, not only Gwen, but even Dr. Connors was a little impatient. Logically speaking, a scientist like him should be very patient. But the non-stop failure in the past two years has completely exhausted his patience. Just when he was about to declare a new round of experiments failed. Peter immediately said, Dr. Connors, look. Canaston's eyes lit up, and the rabbit in front of him began to respond. All along, the genetic medicines developed have either died outright or have no response. A few times, the more dangerous thing was that the rabbit's body burst open because it couldn't bear the regeneration speed. But this time, it was rare that the reaction slowly appeared after the injection. This gave Dr. Connors a lot of confidence. Is it finally going to be successful? I saw the amputated rabbit in the cage, and its body twitched involuntarily. Especially the amputated forelimb, at the moment swayed with a strange frequency. It's as if something is going to grow from somewhere. Dr. Connors and Peter Parker had uncontrollable excitement on their faces at the moment. Finally. Is it finally going to be successful? The next moment, the rabbit twitched all over. Fell down. Luo Feng, who was watching from the other side, also twitched the corner of his mouth. That rabbit is dead. That's it. In front of the test bench, Peter's excited face suddenly froze. And Dr. Connors, who was beside him, looked extremely complicated. I don't know if it's anger, frustration, or something else. I only heard Dr. Connors weakly announce, the 4796th biological experiment, failed. 
Peter slumped when he heard Dr. Connor's announcement. Peter. Gwen said softly when he saw Peter's loss. Peter. Gwen's soft voice immediately caught Peter's attention. Gwen. Seeing Luo Feng beside Gwen, a trace of jealousy flashed in his eyes. But it was very well hidden and did not reveal it. Peter, Dr. Connors. How are you? Gwen is by nature a helpful character. What's more, the two people in front of him, one is his friend for many years, and the other is his friend's mentor. It's okay, I'm used to it. Dr. Connors said with a forced smile. Anyone present could see the complicated emotions beneath that smile. Which classmate is that? Dr. Connors also noticed Luo Feng behind Gwen, and asked curiously in the face of this unfamiliar face. This is Luo Feng, a transfer student who just transferred to State University. The tutor asked me to bring him to familiarize himself with the campus environment. Hello, I'm Luo Feng. Luo Feng stepped forward and said hello. Dr. Connors and Peter also introduced themselves politely. Then Dr. Connors said, Peter, your friends are here. You'll entertain them first. Let me clean up here. But, doctor. Peter wanted to stay and help, but seeing Connor's appearance, he knew he needed to be alone right now. Gwen, Luo Feng. Let's go outside. Gwen and Luo Feng also nodded. Before leaving, Luo Feng glanced at Dr. Connors beside the table and sighed helplessly. Now, his mind is on the verge of being twisted. It's only a matter of time before becoming a lizard man. Laboratory door. Peter, is Dr. Connors okay? Gwen asked worriedly. Peter smiled bitterly. It's not the first time that such an experiment has failed. I believe the doctor can cheer up. By the way, Peter. There's a science fair at Osborne Industries in three days. Would you like to join us? Gwen suddenly remembered that there was such an event some time later. Peter's tired eyes suddenly lit up, and he asked, Gwen, are you going to participate too? Definitely, you also know that I love scientific research. Gwen replied with a smile. Science fair for Osborne Industries. Luo Feng's heart moved. Isn't that the beginning of Peter Parker becoming Spider-Man after being bitten by a mutant spider? It seems, kind of interesting. Then, Peter asked abruptly, what about classmate Luo Feng? I also suddenly remembered this matter. I haven't told Luo Feng about it yet. Gwen said a little embarrassedly. At the same time, he looked at Luo Feng subconsciously, wondering if Luo Feng would like to go with him. Compared to these, I prefer to stay at home and read. Hearing Luo Feng's answer, Peter didn't know why he was overjoyed. And Gwen's eyes flashed a hint of loss. Luo Feng did not go. Isn't it just me by Gwen's side? But before Peter was happy, Luo Feng continued, however, Osborne is a leading enterprise in life science research. I've also been reading a few books from their company lately, to see if it might give me some insight. This reason was definitely made up by Luo Feng, he just wanted to witness the birth of Spider-Man. Now that I have traveled to this universe, I still want to see these historic moments. I heard Luo Feng wanted to go. Gwen and Peter's hearts were different. Peter, that's the deal. Seeing Gwen so happy, Peter could only smile and nod. It would be better if Luo Feng didn't go. Definitely, Luo Feng doesn't know what Peter at the moment is thinking. Even if he knew, he wouldn't care. In Luo Feng's view, Peter is too virgin. This also indirectly caused the people around him to have accidents one after another after he became Spider-Man. Even the Gwen family has. Such people, it is best not to contact too much. Peter, Luo Feng and I are going for a walk. Would you like to walk with us? I see your face as if. I think you should find some time to relax, and so does Dr. Connors. Peter shook his head resolutely. No, the doctor is inside alone. As his student and assistant, I think I should accompany him to summarize the reasons for the failure of the experiment. Gwen could only nod her head. When she came out just now, she also observed Dr. Connors who was lost. Peter was the only one who could comfort him now. After the two exchanged a few more words, Peter turned around and walked back in the direction of the laboratory. Luo Feng also left with Gwen. Not long after the two left, Peter walked out slowly from the corner of the laboratory and looked at Luo Feng's back. Wait, as long as my experimental research is successful, I can go to dinner with a generous Yaguan. It's not that you, the transfer student, stayed by her side all the time. Luo Feng accompanied Gwen to the direction of the school gate. 
This is Gwen slowly speaking. Peter has lived a very difficult life since he was a child. And I'm one of his few friends, and he's also one of my few good friends. Luo Feng didn't speak, and quietly listened to Gwen's story. Also let him know the life experience of this Peter Parker. When he was a child, his parents entrusted Peter to his uncle Ben Parker because of a long trip. This is very different from the plot that Luo Feng understands. Now Peter lives in Uncle Ben Parker's house, but because Ben Parker and his wife are not young. I can only get a pension and make money by doing some casual work. Therefore, Peter's life is also very poor, which leads to his very low self-esteem in this state university, which is crowded with giants. There are few friends. The two quickly walked to the school gate. Gwen immediately said, Okay, we've finished visiting the campus. Now it's your turn to fulfill your promise. Luo Feng smiled and said, Definitely, but I just came to New York and I don't know which steakhouse is better. I know, there's a steakhouse on the 13th block that's pretty good. Luo Feng was taken aback, is it such a coincidence? Isn't it still downstairs? With curiosity, Luo Feng said, Then let's go, beautiful Ms. Stacy. Gwen covered his mouth and smiled. Definitely, Mr. Luo Feng. 13 blocks. Inside a black car. Phil Coulson is holding a coffee in one hand and nibbling on a burger in the other. All day today, he has wandered around and researched all the information he could find. Then, got nothing. Phil Coulson had a headache at the thought of that brazed egg boss who only fooled a, mum fool. Does such a thing really exist? Phil Coulson flashed back the mech in the video. Handsome. Domineering. A man's dream. In a restaurant not far away, Happy, who also came to investigate this matter, smiled and looked at a steak that was just served. With a knife and fork in hand, I enjoyed it deliciously. Phil Coulson watched this scene, and suddenly felt that the burger in his hand was not tasty at all. Also working for people. Why is the difference so big? Taking a bite of the hamburger forcefully, he continued to observe the situation around him. At this time, the taxi with a face stopped at the entrance of the restaurant, and a pair of handsome men and beautiful women got out of the car. Young people's life, I also went out to dinner with a little girl a long time ago. Looking at the two people getting out of the car, Phil Coulson recalled in his heart how romantic he was back then. At a young age, take beautiful girls to eat. Have a drink in the evening. Everything fell into place. This kind of life is doomed to miss him since he joined S.H.I.E.L.D. The two people who got off the taxi not far away were Luo Feng and Gwen who just came out of the school. Is this what you're talking about? Gwen nodded. Yes, their family is the best food in New York. What a coincidence. Luo Feng sighed in his heart. Because across from this store is where he lives. The receptionist at the door led Gwen and Luo Feng into the restaurant. Skillfully ordered the steak set. Luo Feng, who is not very interested in Western food, ordered the same set menu as Gwen. As for the drink that enhances the relationship. Then basically don't think about it. In pretty country, most venues don't sell to teenagers under 21. Luo Feng, you are Chinese, right? Luo Feng nodded. Yes. Then do you have a deep understanding of that mysterious eastern country? Definitely, I can tell you anything you want to know. Gwen immediately asked curiously. I heard that there are a lot of delicious food there, and I can't eat it all in a lifetime. Is it true? Facing Gwen's question, Luo Feng smiled. Sure enough, girls are more interested in food. Indeed, our food culture is endless. Then will you do it? We'll do some. Hearing Luo Feng's answer, Gwen's eyes lit up. At this moment, Luo Feng's eyes narrowed as he looked at a TV hanging not far away. Gwen also saw the change in Luo Feng's eyes and looked behind him. In the live broadcast room of the news channel on the TV, a photo of Tony Stark is released. The hostess held a manuscript in her hand and read, Tony Stark, a patriotic businessman and a genius scientist with Stark's achievements, is testing new border defense weapons in the Middle East in the afternoon. After the weapon test, Tony Stark was attacked by KB on the return convoy, and his whereabouts are currently unknown. At this moment, a fat figure in the corner by the window suddenly bounced from the seat. Oh fake. This move caught everyone's attention. Luo Feng also looked over curiously, and immediately recognized the person. Happy, Tony's friend driver and bodyguard. Why is he here? 
After reading the news, Happy became restless, and he still remembered the task Tony gave him. Now he was more concerned about Tony's safety. After dropping a few USD at random, I picked up my clothes and ran outside. This scene was also seen by Phil Coulson outside. He, who was guarding outside, naturally did not know the news that was being broadcast inside. Seeing that Happy was so flustered, he thought that Happy had found important information about the Mecca. Immediately spit out the hamburger that was half stuffed into his mouth. Pissed. Suddenly, Gwen, who was sitting opposite Luo Feng, covered his mouth and smiled. Make Luo Feng curious for a while. What are you laughing at? Gwen pointed to the outside. Look, don't the two people look alike in a hurry? Even the clothes. Luo Feng looked in the direction Gwen pointed, and immediately recognized the person Gwen was talking about. Phil Coulson agent. If Happy appeared here, it was an accident, or came here to eat. So why is the Phil Coulson agent here? One of them is loyal to Nick Fury and the other is loyal to Tony Stark. According to the current timeline, there will be no intersection. Luo Feng's eyes narrowed, remembering the incident of flying around wearing the Imperial armor last night. I immediately understood. It appears to have been captured by satellite surveillance. The next time you have to keep a low profile. It's not that Luo Feng is afraid, but that he doesn't want to have too much relationship with these official organizations. One is trouble. Second, I don't like these people very much. In this group of people, no one was holding back a good fart. Opening and closing is that I am for your own good. In fact, everyone has their own calculations in their hearts. In history, in the name of being good for you, Mr. Yang did not know how many innocent people were harmed. This is nothing new. Anyway, Luo Feng's rule is that as long as no one provokes him, he will not take the initiative to provoke others. Phil Coulson outside the door didn't attract Luo Feng much attention. Judging from the appearance of him just now, he should have only locked the range where the Emperor's armor appeared, and he had not been thoroughly investigated. Compared to him, Luo Feng pays more attention to the information on the TV. Tony has been taken by the Ten Commandments. This may be undergoing rescue surgery. As long as he returns to announce the cessation of weapons production, his plan can begin. Are you interested in Stark? Gwen asked curiously. Luo Feng smiled and said, he is the richest man. Don't you look at the information about the disappearance of the richest man. Gwen shook his head. I don't like this guy. Why? Although the media described him as a patriotic businessman, a pacifist. But these are just rhetoric. I feel like he's more of a. Gwen tried to find a suitable word. What? Luo Feng asked curiously. A tool man, a tool man who only knows how to produce various weapons of destruction. Inside the Connors Biological Laboratory. Peter cleans up the mess. I bought a hamburger and put some food in front of Connors. Doctor, eat something. That's how your body can handle it. Only have the energy to continue experimenting. Connors smiled helplessly. No, Peter. This may be our last experiment. Peter, who was eating a hamburger, suddenly stiffened, not understanding what Connors meant. Doctor, what do you mean? Peter, I think you know. My experiment is funded by the school and Osborne Industries. But in the past few years, my experiments have not made any progress at all. Osborne Industry and schools have started to issue ultimatums if I don't make substantial progress within a week's time. Having said that, Connors paused, his expression complicated. Peter also thought about what Connors would say next, but he didn't want to believe it. But Connors took a deep breath and added, the Osborne industry and the school will withdraw my funding. Recycle all my current experimental research results. After saying the last word, Connors slumped on the sofa as if he was exhausted. He also understood in his heart. I have been experimenting for two years, but there is no real progress. How could it be possible in the last week to successfully develop a genetic medicine that can regenerate a severed limb? Dr. Connors, don't we have a chance? And one last. As he spoke, Peter's voice became much smaller. Obviously, he also has no confidence that such a drug can be developed within a week. But this is his only chance to make a name for himself. He didn't want to give up either. But can the current predicament be overcome? Peter's heart is also in the dark. The laboratory suddenly fell silent, except for the rustling sound from the glass cabinet. Peter, go back first. 
it's been a long time since you went home early to accompany Ben and the others. But, doctor. Dr. Connors smiled and said, don't worry, I'm fine. You go back first, and I'll sort out the experimental data over the years. Maybe there will be special gains. Peter finally nodded hard. Compared with his own comfort, what Dr. Connors needs now is a person to calm down and think. When Peter left, Connors was the only one left in the lab. Connors scratched the empty sleeve on his right hand, and sighed along, alas. Then he stood up and looked at the test bench, the rabbit that had just died. Suddenly, Connors' pupils shrank sharply. How is this going? Although it is very subtle, Connors believes that he is wrong every time. In the amputated front limb of the rabbit, the muscles there seem to be beating. Connors immediately rummaged through the test bench. Find a magnifying glass and put it in front of you. Carefully observe the position of the muscle beating. At this moment, Connors was sure that he was not mistaken. Later, Connors found the stethoscope by rummaging again. Immediately put the stethoscope on the rabbit's heart. When he heard it, an extremely subtle beating sound came from the front of the stethoscope. This time, Dr. Connors couldn't hold back his smile any longer. Ha ha ha, I succeeded. I knew there was nothing wrong with my decay formula. It was a matter of dose, it was a matter of dose. Ha ha ha. Connors' laughter lingered throughout the laboratory. Incredibly cheerful. Thirteen blocks. Luo Feng took Gwen out of the restaurant, both of them were full. Thank you, what a pleasant dinner. Me too. Luo Feng said. Definitely, Luo Feng is more happy to see Tony's news. And discovering Phil Coulson agent and happy can only be regarded as a windfall. Then I think I should go back. Gwen shyly fiddled with his fingers and said to Luo Feng. You're all here, are you sure you can't come to my house? You're home. Uh-huh. Luo Feng pointed to a luxury apartment opposite. You mean, you live on this. But you're not. Gwen realized he was wrong. Sorry, I didn't mean to. Luo Feng smiled and said, who stipulated that orphans must have no money. Come on, go up and sit down. Inviting friends to sit at home for a while is also one of the fine traditional cultures of our ancient oriental country. Okay, I also want to wonder what a boy like you is like at home. Let's lead the way, Mr. Luo Feng. The scenery here is so beautiful. On the balcony, Gwen blew the evening breeze. The golden hair fluttered in the wind, which looked particularly charming in the night scene. Luo Feng poured out two cups of warm water from the house and handed a cup to Gwen. The tea I ordered has not been delivered yet, so I will have it soon. Gwen took the water from Luo Feng's hand with a smile and said, Definitely, unfortunately there is no wine. Your dad's a policeman, if I drink. He'll arrest me. Gwen Pist smiled and then said, Luo Feng, you know. Dad was my idol when I was young. Oh, what about now? Now, I think he's annoying and always likes me. You know, because of his relationship, I haven't had a boyfriend since junior high school. There aren't even any good friends of the opposite romance. This really surprised Luo Feng. Guys, does that mean Gwen in front of me? Still a baby. In a society as open to the extreme as the beautiful country, Gwen can still remain clean and pure at this age. It was true that Luo Feng was a little surprised. But that's fine too, isn't it? Maybe your dad just wanted to protect you. Luo Feng felt that George did a good job. I saw Gwen raise the corners of his charming mouth and said proudly, I don't need his protection. Luo Feng, let me tell you a secret. Secret. When I was a child, I regarded my father as an idol, so I hope that when I grow up, I can punish the wicked and uphold justice like my father. Even now, this idea has not changed. So I have learned some boxing skills in private. The average person may not be able to beat me. Luo Feng's face was stunned. Dude, is this still the helpless Gwen Stacy he knows? Look at Luo Feng's expression. I know you don't believe it. No, it's not that I don't believe it. I'm just surprised that a girl like you has such a side. Luo Feng didn't know what to say. Contrast cute. But the word doesn't seem right. Gwen reached out and took the water from Luo Feng's hand. Then put two glasses of water on the balcony table. Then he started to take off his thin coat. Luo Feng's eyes widened. Good guy, are people in the beautiful country so direct? I'm not ready yet. And this is the balcony. Although high, you can't see it but not soundproof. Soon, Gwen took off his coat. 
and tied up his hair, put on a capable hairstyle. Gwen, are you? As soon as Luo Feng finished speaking, he saw Gwen's eyes widen. A punch was suddenly thrown towards him. Um. Luo Feng stepped back, and Gwen's fist rubbed the tip of Luo Feng's nose. Interesting. Gwen's actions are impeccable. Not only practiced, but also very powerful. How is it, Luo Feng? Trust me. Coincidentally, Luo Feng also wanted to try it. After cultivating the power of the mind, to what extent can the slight improvement brought about can make him stronger? Although the power of the flesh has not increased. But Luo Feng is confident that Gwen can't beat him. If it's just one punch, I'm afraid it won't be convincing. Humph. Gwen frowned. Another few punches attacked Luo Feng. After several times, Luo Feng avoided it dangerously and dangerously. Oriental Kung Fu. Gwen's competitive spirit was also aroused at once. Luo Feng, I didn't expect you to understand this. Then I'm going to attack with all my strength. It is good. On the balcony, Gwen attacked in full force. But every time he thought he was going to hit Luo Feng, he would be avoided by Luo Feng with subtle movements. This also makes Gwen more and more anxious. Slowly, the rules of punching are messed up. It was at this time that Luo Feng found an opportunity to avoid Gwen's punch. A punch was slammed into Gwen's face. What? Gwen closed his eyes subconsciously and exclaimed. But the next moment, there was no feeling. Only then did he slowly open his eyes and glanced secretly. I found myself at the moment and Luo Feng were very close, and Luo Feng's hand stayed in front of him. And his body was attached to hers. You can even feel the steady and long heat of the other party. Gwen couldn't help blushing. He was fair-skinned, and his face became even better when he turned red. Luo Feng smiled and flicked Gwen's forehead lightly. You lost. Then the two separated, leaving Gwen standing there in a daze. After a while, the red glow on his face did not disappear. Speed, power, and accuracy. Good. You lie, and you won't be able to hit you at all. Luo Feng, do you also know Oriental Kung Fu? Gwen turned and asked with wide eyes. Luo Feng said honestly, no, I just react faster. If this were another one, I might have been lying on the ground begging for mercy from the beginning. Hearing Luo Feng's disguised praise, Gwen's mood suddenly improved a lot. Go to the table, grab a glass of water and drink it. Luo Feng didn't have time to remind Gwen that the glass of water was finished. What's the matter, is there something on my face? That glass of water is mine. Gwen blushed and said, it's, nothing. We're friends. She didn't have the confidence to say that. Luo Feng smiled slightly, walked over to the table, picked up another glass of water and drank it. You. Gwen blushed even more. It's okay, we're friends. Humph. It sounds fine, but there seems to be a big problem. Tonight, Luo Feng also saw the unknown side of Gwen. You really don't know that mysterious oriental kung fu. Gwen changed the subject and confirmed again. No, at least not now. Then you mean you will. Maybe in the future I can recognize a master or something and learn kung fu. I've been looking for a master in New York City for a long time, but I haven't found such a master. If you want to know him in the future, remember to introduce it to me. You are so good, do you still want to continue to practice? I like the feeling of exercising, if my father wouldn't allow it. Maybe I'll be a cop now fighting criminals in New York City too. Luo Feng smiled and said nothing. That would be too dangerous. My god, it's already so late. When Gwen picked up his jacket, he glanced at the time on his phone. Found out that it was past 8 o'clock in the evening. Except for some activities. It was the first time I came home so late. Luo Feng, I think I should go back. See you tomorrow. I'll take it to you. Downstairs. Phil Coulson is back on the 13th block again. I thought there would be some clues, but I followed Happy to Stark Industries, only to find out that it was Tony's life and death that made Happy so nervous. Because the last time the mysterious Mecca appeared at night, Phil Coulson had to continue to investigate here at night. Shield Agent doesn't have any B boxes at all. Phil Coulson can only rant about himself like this. Who let himself have no special ability? Is that, that little couple? The life of young people is really good. Looking at Luo Feng and Gwen coming downstairs, Phil Coulson looked envious. Then let's see you tomorrow, Luo Feng. I think I should be responsible to the end. 
You are such a beautiful girl, I have to watch you get home to feel at ease. Gwen's heart was pounding at the words. After Luo Feng stopped the taxi with a face, the two got into the car and headed to Gwen's house together. In the car, Luo Feng complained for a while. Come back soon, Tony. It's up to you if I can get into a fancy car. At the same time, a beep sounded. Frog Cub has sent you travel photos, please click to take a look. Luo Feng was overjoyed, and the game interface opened in his mind immediately. An envelope-like icon appeared. After clicking, a photo slowly appears in front of the game interface. This person is. In the photo, the frog cub stood at the front. Behind the frog cub, a romantic blonde woman holds a submachine gun in her hand. Behind them, is billowing smoke. And mountains of corpses. This is the world of Resident Evil, and that woman is the heroine Alice. Those behind are zombies. Based on the information provided in the photo, Luo Feng immediately determined the world the frog cub was in. Resident Evil is a dangerous world with endless zombies rampant. If you are accidentally scratched by those monsters, you will be infected with the T-virus and turn into a zombie. What the hell? In this case, if the stupid baby accidentally gets infected, it won't turn into a zombie frog cub when it returns to the game, right? System, my frog cub won't be infected with the T-virus, right? After Luo Feng asked worriedly, a prompt popped up on the game interface, frogs will be injured when they travel in the heavens and the world, but they will not be infected with viruses, nor will they be fatally injured. Once fatally injured, it will be directly sent back to the game for healing. Wait until the injury is healed, or the injury recovers to a certain extent before going out to travel again. So ask the owner of the frog to prepare a salute for the frog cub before each trip. After reading the above tips, Luo Feng breathed a sigh of relief. Fine. At the same time, Luo Feng also decided in his heart that next time the frog cub comes back, he must be well equipped. After all, in the heavens and the world, there are many worlds with a high risk factor. In case the frog cub was seriously injured in a certain world that day, he would be distressed to death. The taxi drove fast, and it didn't take long for the taxi to reach Gwen's door. The next time Gwen opened the car door, he turned around and said to Luo Feng, Goodbye, I had a great time today. Next time I want to eat your oriental food. Luo Feng nodded. Definitely. It was a little cold at night, so Gwen tightened his clothes and headed home. Luo Feng said to the taxi driver, Send me back. At this time, George opened the door and saw Gwen coming back from outside, and at the same time his sharp eyes saw the figure seated in the back row of the taxi. Although some lights are dim, you can't see the appearance. But with years of criminal police experience, he was sure that this figure must be the young man who greeted Gwen in the morning. Looks like you had a nice evening. George looked at Gwen who was walking slowly and said with a smile. In fact he did not object to Gwen in diplomatic friends, friends of the opposite romance. It's just that all the time, the boys who are close to Gwen have been plotting against her. Only the boy in the morning made George a good impression. And no to send her dear daughter home. George's impression of Luo Feng is even better. You know, the night in New York is not so peaceful. Dad, it seems that you are quite free today. You went home so early. George sighed and said, no, I think you've seen the news too, the big talent from Stark Industries is missing. Isn't it missing in the Middle East, you are the director of New York, what does this have to do with you? While accompanying Gwen into the door, George explained, this group of rich people will cause a storm in the city if something goes wrong. Reporters from almost the entire beautiful country are downstairs at Stark Industries today. Maintaining law and order is much more tiring than catching thieves. Gwen nodded knowingly. Suddenly, it seemed that Luo Feng was also very interested in this matter in the afternoon. It seems that it is really a matter of rich people, and everyone will pay more attention to it. Inside the taxi. On the way back, Luo Feng picked up his phone and continued to look at some information about New York City. He wanted to see how this world was different from the marvel he knew. Although there is limited information available online. But a lot of information can be analyzed from a small amount of data. In New York City, for example, there are three giants in the financial world. One is Stark Industry, which made a fortune in the military industry and became the richest man. Tony Stark is in power. 
The second is Osborne Industries, which focuses on life sciences, and is in charge of Ruoman Osborne. And the last one, and the most interesting one. Wilson Grant Faith, the leader of all black industrial chains and underground transactions in New York City. On the other hand, people on the Dow are more accustomed to calling him Jin Bing. On the surface, Jin Bing is active in the upper class as an investment entrepreneur. In fact, under his feet is the darkest side of New York City. Definitely, none of these matters to Luo Feng. The information he has investigated is just that he wants to know more about the world, that's all. Just when Luo Feng was flipping through the information on the internet, the taxi driver slammed on the brakes abruptly. Luo Feng leaned forward, and the phone almost flew out. What's wrong? Sir, I don't think I can take you to the appointed place. I think we should turn around quickly. The taxi driver's tone was trembling. Luo Feng frowned and looked forward through the gap between the main and co-pilots. I saw seven or eight thugs in black jackets, at the moment, they were getting a few motorcycles to block the road. The group of people held various instruments in their hands, and their bodies were covered with all kinds of weird graffiti. Isn't this a blatant robbery? No wonder taxi drivers are so scared. This is the only way to go to the 13th district. This group of people is guarding here. Obviously, they want to rob the rich people in the 13th district. Luo Feng smiled lightly, took out a few USD from his arms and paid the driver, just deliver it here, my house is not far ahead. It's too far to take a detour. I'm afraid of trouble. After paying the bill, Luo Feng opened the door and got out of the car. The taxi driver looked at this young man, there are people who are really not afraid of death these days. Looking back, the effort on hands and feet is not at all dissatisfied. As soon as the accelerator is stepped, the steering wheel twists. A beautiful tail flick completed the U-turn in an instant and walked away. Luo Feng's eyes twitched when he saw this scene. Good guy, can people become car gods when their desire to survive is full? Really underestimated the taxi driver. And the group of underworld gangsters slowly walked towards Luo Feng, ignoring the fast taxi driver. Their target was the other people in the car from the start. How much money does the taxi driver have? At this time, the only people who can go to 13 block from here are the wealthy people who live in the block. Looking at the menacing group of people, Luo Feng raised his hand. I hate dealing with trouble, but if you are courting death. It's another matter. The game interface in my mind opens. The gangsters who were approaching Luo Feng were full of sneers. They are not as simple as asking for money. To treat these rich people, they prefer to beat them hard. Then rob them of all their valuables. If the clothes are also high-end goods. They also don't mind stripping it off and throwing it in the trash. And in their eyes, this childish young man in front of them. It's all high-end stuff. Plus that handsome look. Maybe even the red light district with special services. Boy, hand over all your valuables. The thugs in the center raised their baseball bats and threatened. Then see if you can get it. Luo Feng sneered. This group of thugs are quite good at choosing locations, and this section of the road just happens to be unmonitored. In other words, they can be dealt with unscrupulously. Just as he was about to take out the emperor's belt and summon the emperor's armor. Suddenly feeling something, he raised his head and looked up. Luo Feng's eyes narrowed. At the edge of that building, there was a figure standing there. Seems to be watching what's going on below. One of the gangsters also noticed Luo Feng's strangeness and followed Luo Feng's gaze. His face changed suddenly, and he shouted in horror, Boss, boss. There's someone up there. After the gangsters heard it, they all looked up. However, the top of the building was empty at this time. Nothing at all. The thought he was being tricked by his younger brother, and gave him a stick angrily. Fake. Brighten your eyes a little next time. I can't use my eyes, I can help you dig it down and give it to others. Yes, sorry. Boss. The didn't bother to pay attention to him, and continued to raise his stick towards Luo Feng. Threaten. You take out the money yourself, or we help you. At the moment, Luo Feng stood calmly in place. The idea of summoning the emperor's armor has been abandoned. Because someone will help him clean up these gangsters. Seeing Luo Feng with a calm face and ignoring him, the punk leader immediately became angry. What he disliked most was the arrogant look in other people's eyes. 
But the next second, he saw Luo Feng raised his finger and pointed behind him. The gangster looked behind him subconsciously. By the dim street light, a man in a red tights and a red mask was standing there. The man in red held a double stick in his hand and looked in their direction. The boss was stunned in an instant, and he said with some trembling, Ye. Daredevil. The other little brothers heard the name. There was still the mood to continue robbing Luo Feng, and they all turned to Daredevil. One by one looked nervous, waiting to face Daredevil. It was as if the Daredevil in front of him was not alone, but an army that surrounded them. Seeing the ugly appearance of these gangsters, Luo Feng couldn't help but smile. It perfectly explains what it means to bully the soft and fear the hard. During this time, Luo Feng saw news about Daredevil when he was learning about the news of New York City. It is a superhero who has only recently appeared in New York, and is active in fighting criminals at night and maintaining justice. And his real identity is Matt Murdock, a blind lawyer in a New York law firm. During the day, as a lawyer, he helped the victim get justice in the lawsuit. And at night, he turns into Daredevil to fight evil. So when he appeared, Luo Feng knew that he had saved a lot of trouble. Um, sure enough the city needs superhero. Standing under the street lamp, Nemo cocked his neck and said, looks like I'm going to be busy again tonight. You all give it to me, we have a lot of people. Don't be afraid of him. The gangsters were coaxed by the boss, and their blood immediately surged. How brave people are. A group of people immediately swung their weapons and killed Daredevil. Daredevil, armed with double sticks, rushed into the crowd. Although he is blind in both eyes, it also magnifies the other five senses. Night and day are the same to him. Whenever Daredevil evades an attack, his double sticks are like two spirit snakes, precisely attacking the enemy's vital points. Although not fatal, the pain caused was enough to make them immobilized for a long time. Just under two minutes. All the gangsters lay down in pain, groaning and wailing. Only the gangster in the back who didn't do anything, looked at this scene with dull eyes. When he found Daredevil taking a step towards him, the baseball bat in his hand fell to the ground involuntarily. His feet slumped straight down. Then Luo Feng couldn't help but took a few steps back, frowned and covered his nose. There was a smell of urine in the air. This guy, the plot was frightened by Daredevil. Dare to come out and mix with this little courage. Also became the boss. Are his little brothers blind? Don't come here, I'm not afraid of you. Don't come here. Do not come. You know what? My boss is Jin Bing. Daredevil's five senses are already much stronger than ordinary people's, and the pungent urine smell was directly smoked back two steps. And this is also misunderstood by the gangsters. Daredevil is afraid of Kim Bing. With a backer, he felt that he could do it again. Picking up the stick on the ground, he stood up and said proudly, how is it? You're afraid. Luo Feng. Daredevil. The two of them had also seen each other for a long time, and it was the first time they saw someone act like a dog. Daredevil couldn't stand him, and he picked up a stick on the ground and knocked him unconscious. Jin Bing. What I'm investigating now is Jin Bing. Daredevil murmured, then turned to Luo Feng and asked curiously, are you afraid at all just now? A little scared, but didn't I see you coming? Luo Feng shrugged his shoulders. Daredevil is a smart guy, or he wouldn't be a barrister in New York City. For Luo Feng's apparently joking remarks, he expressed deep disbelief, but he did not want to delve into it. In the future, try to go out as little as possible. New York nights are not as safe as mornings. After speaking, Daredevil disappeared into the night. Back at home, Luo Feng looked at the house with a large unused area. I'm going to buy some fitness equipment tomorrow. Then the spiritual training began. The next morning. The other side of the world. Somewhere in the desert region of the Middle East. Inside a converted cave. Tony, who was originally bright and beautiful, at the moment was lying in a shabby hospital bed in a mess. His chest was covered with bandages. There is a wire under the clothes connected to a large lithium battery. Tony on the hospital bed was in pain. I don't know if it was a nightmare or because of the stress response of the body after the injury. After a while, Tony snapped his eyes open. The discomfort in his nose made him uncomfortable. When I touched it, I found that there was a tube. After pulling it out with force, every part of my body was in pain, as if it was about to fall apart. When he was about to roll over and get out of bed, 
he realized that his body was covered in bandages. There is also a wire. What the hell is this? Tony had no idea what was going on right now. All he could do was to pull the bandage off his body. If I were you, I would never do this. In the dark corner of the cave, a faint voice came. Tony looked around and saw an older man standing in front of the mirror shaving his beard. Tony, who had never listened to other people's advice very much, naturally wouldn't stop his actions because of his words. Continue to tear the bandage on the chest. Soon, he saw that his chest, at the moment, was a mess, covered with tiny wounds. Out of the center, a circular metal object was embedded on it, and a wire was derived from it and connected to the large battery on one side. Tony watched this scene in disbelief. What the hell did you do to me? After a while, Tony regained his strength, sat on the edge of the bed and asked weakly to the stranger in front of him. He definitely didn't know that the person in front of him was Ethan, who had a relationship with him at a technology conference. Single quote. Tony's question made Ethan smile. What did I do to you? I saved you. I've done my best to remove the shrapnel from your body, but there are still a lot of tiny pieces that flow into your veins. After some conversation, Tony finally understood that the electromagnetic device on his chest was for his life. Slow down the time it takes for debris to enter the heart. But it can only be delayed for a week. A week later, he would still be dead. And ironically, this explosive weapon is also his own masterpiece. At this moment, a rapid script sound came from outside the door. Ethan's face changed instantly. Quick, quick, stand up. Whatever I do, you do what I do. Tony stood up reluctantly and put his head in his hands. Before he came, Ethan explained to Tony, they're the Ten Commandments, and they attacked you and brought you here. Wait a minute, don't talk, I'll talk to them. Tony nodded, realizing that this was a group of KBS. Soon, a slightly fat KB member brought a group of brothers to Tony. After a while of talking, Tony finally understood why he was kidnapped. Create the most lethal Jellico missile. I won't do it. Tony's answer directly allowed the Ten Commandments gang to carry out a brutal abuse that did not endanger his life. Finally, under Ethan's persuasion, Tony could only pretend to cooperate first. Outside the cave, Tony, holding a lithium battery, saw that the weapons held by this group of KB elements were actually made by Stark Industries. He has always naively thought that the weapons he made should be bought by the ZFs of various countries to build national defense and the peacekeeping operations of the United G. Now he realizes that he was very wrong. The little leader of the Ten Commandments gang said that he could provide any material Tony needed, and as long as the Jellico missile was developed, he would be let go. Tony knew it was just their rhetoric. When the missile was researched, it was when he died. Inside the cave, Tony looked frustrated. Ethan comforts and encourages Tony. No matter what, they will kill me. Even if they don't kill me, I won't survive for a week. Tony never thought that one day he would be so close to death. So, it's a crucial week, right? Ethan's voice fell. For some reason, Tony's mind recalled the mecca he saw that day when it was cloudy and raining. If I can. Tony's dark eyes gradually returned to light. As a genius, a grand design plan slowly unfolded in his mind. Far away on the other side of the world, Luo Feng, who was shopping for gym equipment, didn't know it was because of him. A different Iron Man is being born. Inside the Connors laboratory. Connors was writing formulas on the blackboard, as well as new recipes for reagents. Messy hair and dark circles under the eyes. It's enough to prove that Dr. Connors stayed up all night last night. He found a breakthrough, and was so excited that he couldn't sleep. Peter walked into the laboratory, only to find a series of formulas on the blackboard. Doctor, did you stay in the lab without going home last night? Peter couldn't believe it. Yes, Peter. I've found the crucial link, based on the formula. There is absolutely no problem this time. Connor's tone was full of excitement. Even with a hint of madness. Peter also noticed Connor's strangeness and said quickly, Doctor, leave the rest to me. You should have a good rest. No, I don't need to rest. Peter, prepare to start formulating new genetic reagents now. We're running out of time, hurry up. Peter knew he couldn't persuade Connors, so he immediately jumped into the experiment. For scientists, sometimes staying up all night is not a big problem. The two worked intensively in the laboratory. 
Luo Feng's house. A fitness area was planned by him in this way. Fortunately, the house I bought is big enough, otherwise these things can fill the place. Gwen didn't stay with him today, but went to Osborne Industries and their docking science fair thing. Otherwise, Gwen would be able to put on some tight tracksuits and move with him here. Speaking of this, should I prepare a better looking sportswear for her as well? Luo Feng thought to himself. After all, with so many sports equipment, it is a bit of a waste for only one person to use it. Yep. Can't be wasted. Luo Feng did what he thought of, and directly turned on the computer and browsed the women's sportswear. One of them, in pink and white, instantly caught his attention. Well, it's just you. Next night, Luo Feng walked down the treadmill sweating profusely. While wiping sweat, he entered the game and harvested a wave of four-leaf clovers. The frog cub has been on this trip for a long time. Luo Feng sighed that the frog cub had not been seen for two or three days. I really miss him. I don't know what kind of specialties and souvenirs the frog cub can bring him in that collapsed zombie world. After harvesting the four-leaf clover, Luo Feng sat on the yoga mat to prepare for spiritual practice. At this time, the beeping sound of the mobile phone that was put aside for charging sounded. Luo Feng picked it up and saw that it was a text message from Gwen. I haven't seen her much in the past two days, and she has been busy with Osborne Industries. Luo Feng clicked on the text message. At 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, meet at the school gate. Remember not to be late. Okay. Luo Feng wrote back. Holding the function machine in his hand, Luo Feng has not been used to the communication method of this era until now. Obviously the upper level technology is so strong, but it has not been delegated to the people's livelihood at all. It is indeed a beautiful country. Not to mention the exclusive technologies of Stark Industries, most of the technologies mastered by S.H.I.E.L.D. are absolutely ahead of their time, and can be applied to life. But yeah, you know it. After replying to Gwen's message, Luo Feng started today's spiritual practice. Inside the Connors Laboratory, several groups of newly developed reagents were placed on the test bench. The amputated white rabbits are also all ready. Peter, compare the test data again to see if there are any problems. Dr. Connors asked. He hadn't slept for two days and two nights, and now Rao was excited, but the tone of his voice was indescribably tired. Peter compared the data and was sure there was no problem. Worryingly, he said, it's all right, Dr. Connors. Would you like to rest first? It will take a day for the reagents to react. No, I'm fine. I'm going to see my masterpiece born. Dr. Connors said stubbornly. The next second he said this, Dr. Connors sat back on the chair because he couldn't support his body. Peter knew it would not go on like this. If Dr. Connors continues to hold on like this, there is no need to wait for the test results. He had to fall on the test stand first. Having not slept for two days and two nights has caused Dr. Connors to be mentally weak and extreme. Peter turned around and poured a glass of water for Dr. Connors. At the same time, without being found by him, he threw a small white pill inside. Doctor, drink a glass of water first. Connors didn't doubt his student and took the water directly, thank you, Peter. He just happened to be a little thirsty. Take the water and drink it. Although there is a strange smell, Connors is obviously slow now and has not reacted. Thanks. Dr. Connors handed back the water glass and continued to observe the genetic reagents on the table. After a while, Connor's eyelids started to fight unbearably. In the end I couldn't stand it anymore. Peter, I think you're right, I should take a break. I'll sleep for two hours. You wait and remember to call me. Peter nodded. Understood, doctor. Before he finished speaking, he saw that Connors had fallen asleep on the chair. Peter immediately brought a blanket to cover it with. In the laboratory, only Peter was left to record the test data. The night passed. Connors woke up from his chair leisurely, and a night's sleep made him feel much better. Peter. Peter ran over when he heard Connors' voice. You're awake, doctor. How long have I slept? Twelve hours, doctor. Peter looked at his watch and said, it's seven in the morning. God, it looks like I'm really tired. How is the experimental data recorded? Everything is normal, exactly as your formula deduced. Connors smiled gratified. It seems that we are about to succeed. Peter, you're tired too. You can sleep for a while too, and I'll watch the rest. 
Bad, doctor. Um. Dr. Connors looked at Peter curiously, with an expression of hesitating to speak. Just say something, Peter. We are not only teachers and students, but also good friends. Peter thought about it and said, I want to throw up at the Osborne Industries Science Fair. It does seem to be today, yes. You go. At the current rate of response, we estimate that we won't be able to start biological experiments until tomorrow. During this time, you and I can both relax. Peter's face brightened. Then I'll go first. Wait, Peter. Connors stopped Peter, then smiled. Get dressed up, Gwen is there. Peter scratched his head embarrassedly. At the school gate, Gwen organized the students who participated in the science fair. This activity is not mandated by the school. All interested students can participate. And Luo Feng is purely to join in the fun. Hi, Peter. Gwen, who is in the lead, greeted Peter happily when he saw Peter hurried over. If you're late, you'll be late. You won't be able to get to Osborne Industries if you don't get on this train. Fortunately we caught up. It's all here, let's go. Hi, Luo Feng. Peter greeted Luo Feng politely when he saw Luo Feng. Luo Feng nodded and said with a smile, Good morning. Is Dr. Connors okay? Doctor is not bad. The experiment has come a long way. Peter said proudly. After all, once the experiment is successful, he will leave a strong legacy in the history of life science research as an assistant. His identity will also be very different. Are you finally going to succeed? Luo Feng murmured in his heart. It seems that after today, not only Spider-Man will be born, but also Lizardmen will appear. What a fateful enemy. Peter naturally didn't know what Luo Feng was thinking at the moment. His eyes were on Gwen, the blonde goddess in front of him. Soon he will be able to be open and upright, and Yagwen, who has no psychological burden, can go out to eat. Okay, everyone get on the bus in an orderly manner, we will go to the Osborne Industrial Building. Attend a science fair. Osborne Industries. Another large industrial company in New York City that is as famous as Stark Industries. Unlike Stark Industries, which focuses on the development of the military industry, Osborne Industries pays more attention to making breakthroughs in life sciences. Among them, Osborne Industries is best known for its technology of cultivating mutant animals and extracting the corresponding mutant genes from them. In order to treat human diseases and improve human life expectancy. These are all the information Luo Feng found online during this period. A group of people soon arrived in front of the Osborne Industrial Building. After getting out of the car, someone will take them in to visit. Luo Feng walked with Gwen and Peter. The three had just got off the car and were about to follow the guide into Osborne Industries. I heard someone calling Peter from behind. Peter. Peter turned his head and shouted happily, Hi, Harry. Luo Feng and Gwen also turned around. Harry stepped forward and glanced at Gwen. Hi, Gwen. This is. This is Luo Feng, the new transfer student in our class. Harry stretched out a hand and shook Luo Feng. Hello, I'm Harry Osborne. Hello. Luo Feng glanced at Harry. Of course he knew him, but the other party didn't know him. Harry Osborne. Osborne Industrial Power Holder, son of Ruoman Osborne. That is, the Prince of Osborne Industries. He is also a friend of Peter Parker. This time, I was able to participate in the science exhibition of Osborne Industries because of the cooperation with the State University on many projects. The second was the result of discussions between Harry and his father. Come on, I think we should go in. Gwen reminded. Harry. At this moment, a middle-aged man's voice came from behind them. A middle-aged man in a suit walked over with a backpack in his hand with cold eyes. You forgot your backpack. Harry took the backpack from him, then explained to Luo Feng and the others, Ruoman Osborne, my father. Ruoman glanced at Luo Feng and the others and said with a smile, you are my son's classmates. Peter immediately said, yes, I have read your microscience research report, which is really good. Peter has the feeling of seeing an idol while chasing stars. You understand. Ruoman was surprised. Definitely, I wrote a report. He's as conceited as Tony because he's a genius too. Otherwise, how could he have founded Osborne Industries by himself and achieved remarkable achievements in life sciences? Peter was young, and being able to see his research report was enough to make Ruoman look up to him. 
For Luo Fang and Gwen, he subconsciously chose to ignore them. Yeah, hopefully we can sit down and talk science together when there's a chance. Go in, your visit time is limited today. Gwen whispered in Luo Feng's ear, I was so arrogant when I communicated with him two days ago. Luo Feng said indifferently, maybe all geniuses are like this. Before entering Osborne Industries, Luo Feng thought about the size and luxury inside. But when he actually stepped into the exhibition building of Osborne Industries, he was also shocked by the scene in front of him. The whole floor of the exhibition hall is filled with all kinds of glass cabinets. And the animals displayed in these cabinets are not what you usually see. These are mutant animals bred by scientists at Osborne Industries. In front of each glass cabinet, there is an instructor. When they passed by a display cabinet, a special person explained the animals in the cabinet to them. As well as their experimental value, research direction. Compared to other people listening and taking notes. Luo Feng, like Harry, was not interested at all. You don't seem to like these things. Harry didn't approach Luo Feng with the same enthusiasm as the others when he saw Luo Feng beside him. I just like to join in the fun. It's boring to stay at home all the time. Harry hooked his lips. Agree with Luo Feng's point of view. The two walked in the back with little interest. Luo Feng also learned some interesting things about the upper class through Harry. Gwen and Peter were at the front of the crowd. The two of them were very interested in these scientific studies. Now in front of you is a super spider bred by Osborne Industries. It combines the excellent genes of the previous three spiders and is cultivated with a new technology of genetic recombination. There are only 15 in total. In front of everyone, there is a glass cabinet divided into 15 small lattices. Inside each glass case is a bright red and purple little Spider-Man. Although it is small in size, the net woven inside is extremely tough. Gwen, who was interested, took a closer look, suddenly frowned and counted them carefully and said, there are only 14. What did you say? The lecturer was stunned. Step in right now. Sure enough, one of the grids was missing, leaving only 14 super spiders. I guess it should be taken by the researchers to do the experiment. Okay, let's move on to the next visit. What no one noticed was that the bright little Spider-Man at the moment was crawling into Gwen's backpack at a very fast speed along the cuffs of Gwen's trousers. Including Luo Feng, who was walking at the back, didn't notice. Watching everyone leave, Peter picked up the camera and took a few pictures of the super spider. A black little Spider-Man ran from his arm. This little Spider-Man Peter knows, one of the three spiders just introduced by the docent. One of the super spider's genes belongs to him. It's just that he's just a normal rearing spider, not a mutant spider. Just as Peter looked at the spider in his hand, the spider unceremoniously bit his tiger's mouth. Peter was in pain and threw the spider away with force. Only the teeth marks of the tiger's mouth remained. Peter touched his mouth. Fortunately, this spider is non-venomous. A small episode that did not attract everyone's attention. A group of people continued to visit like this. Soon the science fair will be over. Although a science fair. But Osborne Industries didn't plan to show the bottom of the press box to a group of students. After all, those are the lifeblood of Osborne Industries. After leaving the Osborne Industrial Building, the students went home. Harry had planned to invite a few others to sit at home with him. But Gwen was picked up by Officer George who, just passed by. Luo Feng said that there are still some things to shirk at home. The three stood at the door of Osborne Industries. The sharp-eyed Harry suddenly noticed that there seemed to be a wound on Peter's hand, and asked, Peter, what's wrong with your hand? It's okay, I accidentally bumped into it during the experiment. Peter came up with a random reason and fooled it. Luo Feng looked at the wound on Peter's hand thoughtfully. Spider-Man is about to be born. Luo Feng back home. Start your own training program. After a few sports, I was sweating profusely. Just the amount of exercise in the past few days has already made obvious muscle lines appear on his body. Look at yourself in front of the full-length mirror. Luo Feng nodded with satisfaction. Such training effect. I don't know if it is the welfare after crossing. Or because of the special physique of the Emperor's Armor Summoner. Whatever the reason. This is all good. Before coming to the refrigerator, Luo Feng started to prepare dinner tonight. Compared with those Western food, he still prefers his own Chinese food. 
At the same time, Luo Feng was browsing the latest news about Tony on his notebook. The current Stark industry has been completely messed up into a pot of porridge. The news about Tony's death on the internet is even more overwhelming. As a result, the stock of Stark Industries continued to decline. But Luo Feng knows that now is not the time to start. Had to wait until Tony made that announcement. This is the best time to start. Just as Luo Feng was paying attention to the information on the internet, a prompt sounded in his mind. Frog Cub is back. The Frog Cub brought you a souvenir, go take a look. Luo Feng just stopped paying attention to Tony's information. Open the game. Turn off the hints that don't matter and focus on the souvenirs you care about the most. This souvenir, the icon style is like a book. On the surface of the book, there is a pattern of firearms. Click the icon and the information will appear. Book of Firearms, a souvenir from the world of Resident Evil, the heroine Alice's lifelong knowledge of firearms can be directly inherited after use. Luo Feng's face was delighted. Can someone else's skills be brought back as a souvenir? Luo Feng's face brightened, as the so-called skill does not overwhelm the body. Who would despise their own life-saving means? Besides, in this age of legal gun ownership, it seems a bit low not to play with guns. Before Luo Feng could inherit the Book of Firearms, the prompt sound continued. Ding. The frog cub doesn't seem to be in a good mood, and seems to have encountered some unhappy troubles. It is recommended to help the frog cubs to avoid the benefits of the next journey. The frog cub is not happy. Luo Feng was a little confused, he still has his own mood. The original little game doesn't seem to have this setting, right? Luo Feng closes the souvenir interface. Looking at the game interface, the frog cub is not outside the door, but at home. The frog cub on the edge of the table, at the moment, his arms are folded in front of his chest. The mouth is bulging, and there is a small white bubble on the small head. Inside the bubble is a red angry sign. Like that. Very cute. How am I going to do this? This made Luo Feng a little troubled. Do you want to comfort the frog cub? He can do anything, but this comforter is not very good. The host can directly ask the frog cub what happened, and then find a way to help the frog cub solve it. Hearing the system prompt, Luo Feng tentatively asked the frog cub. Little frog cub, what happened? Whoever makes you unhappy, we'll beat him up. The frog cub sitting at the table seemed to hear Luo Feng's voice. The two little hands waved quickly, with a hint of cuteness in the funny. As if complaining. As the frog cub waved its hands, the original angry little icon also turned into a little frog head with crescent eyes. Showing a happy look. Behind the little frog's head is a small backpack. Immediately afterwards, the two small expressions flashed a few times and changed again. The backpack behind the little frog's head turned into a small head of a ghastly zombie. Then the little frog head changed from happy to shocked with an exclamation mark. Two small expressions flashed regularly one after the other. Luo Feng immediately understood what the frog cub wanted to express. He took the luggage that Luo Feng prepared for him and went out to travel happily. As a result, I went to the world of Resident Evil and was chased by the zombies inside. Frog cub told Luo Feng what happened after he arrived in the world of Resident Evil. Luo Feng watched intently. Apparently the reason why the frog cub was angry was on this trip. Soon, a third small avatar appeared, the avatar of a blonde girl. This is Alice. With that obvious feature, Luo Feng immediately recognized that this avatar represented the heroine Alice. After Alice appears, the frog cub and Alice's position switch. Then a red cross appeared on the zombie's head. Frog cub and Alice were left in the little bubble. Then both of them turned into smiling faces. Luo Feng suddenly remembered the photo sent by the frog cub not long ago, a photo with Alice. Behind him is a pile of zombie corpses. It turns out that Alice saved you. The frog cub nodded with his eyes bent. But the next moment, the expression of the frog cub changed from happy to angry. Between the original Alice and frog cub, a male head with sunglasses and a golden back suddenly appeared in the middle of the two small heads. This man is, the villain of the Resident Evil series. Luo Feng's eyes narrowed. I immediately recognized who the male head was. Like Alice, he became the Superman villain Albert Wesker after being injected with the T-virus. Then Alice's head flickered and got in the middle of Wesker and the frog cub. 
Then the two heads of Alice and Wesker collided. After touching several times in a row, Alice's head snapped back, knocking the frog cub out. Only the frog cub remained in the small bubble. Luo Feng suddenly realized, what are you angry about, this big bad guy bullies you and your friends. You still can't help, you were sent back by Alice. The frog cub nodded vigorously. Luo Feng rubbed his chin with his hand, and then clicked on the game store. In the game store, except for travel items. There are also various props to enhance the frog's strength. In order to ensure that the frog cub has enough self-protection power when traveling in the heavens and the world. A dazzling array of products scroll down. What catches the eye are various skill books, as well as physical enhancement items. One time and permanent. But both have the same drawbacks. That is too expensive. Hundreds of clovers at every turn. The key is that I only have more than 400 clovers left now. Not enough to buy. Luo Feng twitched the corner of his mouth and asked, is there any other way for me to get clover? Yes, the host can get clover by filling money. 10,000 United States dollars equals one clover. Hiss. Luo Feng gasped for a moment. This Nima is called fill money. This TM is clearly called burning money. But I saw the frog cub who turned from anger to agreed. Luo Feng calculated his property. And plans to acquire shares in Stark Industries. Luo Feng gritted his teeth and said with heavy bleeding, charge, 5 million. Recharge 5 million United States dollars successfully, get 500 clover. Current number of clover, 956. Looking at the skyrocketing clover, Luo Feng felt a pain in the flesh. With clover, Luo Feng quickly browsed the strengthening props in the store that could make the frog cub stronger. Man of Steel. Price, 250 clover. Type. Disposable props. Item effect. Permanently enhance the frog's defense. Strong as a cow. Price. 250 clover. Type. Disposable props. Item effect. Permanently enhance the frog's power. If it is in the world of Resident Evil, I think these two will be more suitable for frog cubs. Luo Feng carefully measured Wesker's combat effectiveness. And how to enhance the ability to be more cost effective in the world of Resident Evil. After all, this four-leaf clover. It's really expensive. Okay, just buy these three. Weapon Mastery. Price. 284 leaf clover. Type. Disposable props. Item effect. After use, the frog gains the mastery ability of all types of weapons, including hot weapons. Martial Arts Master. Price. 254 leaf clover. Type. Disposable props. Item effect. After using it, the frog will become a master who is proficient in various martial arts. Double Knives of Deadpool. Price. 264 Leaf Clover. Type. Weapon. Item Introduction. In the Marvel Universe, Deadpool Wade's adamantium double knives are not only sharp, but also extremely hard, even if they are bombed by cannons, they will not be damaged. A total of 794 Leaf Clovers are consumed. After clicking to buy, Luo Feng's four-leaf clover balance was only 166. Immediately afterwards, Luo Feng bought another 54-leaf clover bento. Let the frog cubs eat and drink, and then go back to the field. Frog cub. Your father and I have hemorrhaged a lot this time and asked you to go back to the place. You must bring me something good next time you come back. Luo Feng opened the inventory and equipped the frog cub with all the things he just bought. When the Deadpool's double knife was equipped, two long knives appeared behind the frog cub. It looked so cute. Okay, you've got everything ready for your next trip. Hope the money isn't wasted. After putting the bento into frog cub's backpack, Luo Feng left the game. Before leaving, Luo Feng extracted the book of firearms. A series of firearm knowledge poured into Luo Feng's mind like a tide. So Luo Feng simply digested the amount of knowledge in his mind. While meditating on the yoga mat, practice spiritual strength. Not long after practicing, I heard a beep. The frog cub is going on a trip. Luo Feng couldn't help but laugh a little. Is this a trip? Going out in such a hurry, it is obvious that there is no overnight revenge. Stupid frog, don't come back hurt, your father, I don't have the money to heal you right now. Gwen's house. After dinner with his parents, Gwen went back to his room. She is not like Luo Feng who goes to join in the fun and hang out. But with a learning attitude. 
also took a lot of notes. At the desk, Gwen picked up a backpack with a notebook. When my hand just reached in to take the notebook, I suddenly felt a tingling pain. Ow. What is this? Gwen yanked his hand back, and found that there were two more small holes on the back of his hand, as if he had been bitten by something. Immediately afterwards, she saw that something seemed to jump out of her school bag. Gwen screamed in fright and jumped up from the chair. In a hurry, she stepped on the unknown creature that jumped out of her backpack and smashed it with one foot. Can't tell what it is. But Gwen didn't know it, just glanced at the back of the innocuous hand. The George couple downstairs, after hearing Gwen's cry. Rush upstairs immediately. George pushed open the door of his daughter Gwen. What happened? What happened? There was a bug just now that scared me. George glanced at the room, made sure there was no other abnormality, and said, Do you need me to help you drive away that bug? No, Dad. I'm just scared because it's so sudden. Okay, I don't think my daughter is that timid. George said proudly. Just as he was about to leave, Gwen stopped George. Dad, can you knock on the door before entering my room next time? George also realized his recklessness and said apologetically, I'm sorry, my daughter. Bye. Call me if you need to. Seeing George leave, Gwen observed his hands again. Take out the medicine box at home and do simple disinfection measures. It was when she lowered her head to deal with the wound on her hand that she realized that there seemed to be a lump under her feet just now. Gwen observed it carefully and determined that it was an unlucky bug that was trampled to death by his own foot. You bit me and I stomped you. We're even. After packing everything up, Gwen started flipping through today's notes. After a while, Gwen didn't know why, but Luo Feng's figure appeared in his mind. That decent facial features. Fascinating. I wonder if Luo Feng is free tomorrow. I want to go to his house for some oriental food. Gwen picked up the phone, ready to ask. A burst of nausea and dizziness came quickly. Is that bug just now poisonous? Gwen opened his mouth to call George. But he found himself unable to shout, and the dizziness became more and more serious. Soon, he fainted directly on his desk. Gwen fainted and had a strange dream. She dreamed that she herself became a big spider and looked very ugly. This is Luo Feng appearing in front of her. She was swallowed hard. Don't want. Gwen woke up from a nightmare. She was lying in bed when she found at the moment. Cover the quilt. And he was soaked with sweat. In the end what happened? Gwen got out of bed in confusion and walked downstairs. Downstairs at the table, George is enjoying his breakfast. Seeing Gwen coming down, he smiled and reminded, Next time you are too tired to study, remember to go to bed first. Sleeping in front of a desk can easily catch a cold. Gwen asked, Dad, did you come into my room again last night? It was your mother who gave you cocoa, and found that there was no response to knocking on your door. After entering, you found you sleeping in front of the desk. So I went up and carried you back to the bed. George explained. Gwen's mother came out of the kitchen and nodded. Next time, pay attention to rest, don't study too late. However, Gwen looked puzzled, recalling what happened last night. But when she looked at the back of her hand. A smooth piece, without any wounds. Don't change your clothes and get ready for dinner. You're going to be late for school, Gwen's mother reminded. Gwen then noticed the clock on the wall. My God, I have my first class this morning. Gwen ran back upstairs quickly, just before the door of the room. Accidentally slipped under the foot, and the whole body fell forward. In a hurry, Gwen twisted violently. After a rollover, it landed perfectly. Oh my God. Gwen girl Spider-Man, here we come. The Middle East. Inside the cave, Tony carefully injected energy into the newly researched reactor. Under Ethan's gaze, the circular reactor slowly bloomed with a soft blue light. This amazing technique made him stunned. He suddenly realized that the man in front of him was called a genius, which was a bit demeaning to him. In such a desperate situation, it is possible to create such a thing. This doesn't look like a Jericho missile. It's a miniature oscillating arc reactor, Tony explained. There's a big one in my hometown that powers my factory. With this, the debris can be stopped from entering my heart. Ethan understood instantly. All previous lithium batteries could do was delay the time the debris entered the heart. If this reactor wants to stop it, it must exceed the power output of lithium batteries more than 10 times. How much power does it generate? 
Ethan asked curiously. Tony proudly said, if I'm not wrong, it should be 3 billion joules per second. Ethan looked stunned. Is this something that humans can do? That's enough for you to live 50 times. Tony nodded, except that he didn't just build this little reactor to stop the shrapnel. That's right, or 15 minutes for a big guy. Big guy. Ethan was a little confused. Then I saw Tony take out several design drawings. These designs, Ethan knew, were all drawn by Tony while he was working on the reactor. It looks like a weapon, but also like some kind of special armor. We're going to get out with this. What is this? Ethan couldn't understand. Pile them up and see. Tony put the design codes together, and after passing through the lights, the independent parts of each image overlapped. Ethan was instantly stunned. This. This is a set of. Humanoid armor. So amazing. Ethan can only sigh like this. Tony patted him on the shoulder. If it wasn't for your reminder, I wouldn't remember what I saw that night. As long as we build this thing, we can kill it from here. Ethan nodded. Does this big guy have a name? Tony thought about it and said, Mark 1. Mark 1. Ethan murmured the name, marveling at Tony's brain. As for what was discovered, Ethan wasn't worried. The Ten Commandments gang are a bunch of illiterate people who don't know the three characters, so long as the cover-up work is done well. The group would have thought the two of them were building Jellico missiles. Okay, let's get started, so as not to have too many dreams at night. Next, help me put this on first, I don't want to walk around with this guy anymore. Tony raised the small reactor in his hand and glanced at the lithium battery again. On the police car, Gwen sat in the co-pilot seat and kept looking at his hands back and forth. The scene at the door of the room in the morning still made her feel incredible. But Gwen didn't say it. She vaguely felt that it had something to do with her being bitten last night. My body seems to be changing in some way. This made him a little uneasy. George, who was driving next to him, couldn't stand it anymore and said, if you want to paint your nails, I won't object. As long as it's not so bright. Gwen directly ignored George's complaints and asked, Dad, did you find the wound on my hand yesterday? Wound. What, are you injured? George frowned and glanced at Gwen's hands. There is no problem. If he hadn't been driving now, he would have grabbed Gwen's hand and had a good look. However, Gwen said uncertainly, I remember being bitten by a bug. Insect. George was stunned for a moment, and immediately remembered that Gwen was frightened by the bug last night, and said comfortably, I think you must have had a nightmare, child. Okay, your school is here. Get out of the car first, I have to rush to Stark Industries to maintain law and order. Watching Gwen get out of the car, George added, if you're really scared, I'll buy you a bottle of insecticide when I go home at night. No need, dad. I'm not afraid of bugs. After that, Gwen turned his head and left. On the campus, Gwen carefully recalled what happened last night, and she was a little lost in her thoughts. So much so that Peter walked to the side only to find out. Behind them, several school gangsters found that Peter, who was only bullied by them on weekdays, at the moment actually walked with the school flower goddess. Immediately, I wanted to play Peter. Look at me. One of them compares the basketball in his hand, and one throws the ball with all his strength. Aimed at Peter's back. When the ball hits, they believe that Peter will go down and lose face in front of Gwen. The moment the ball was released, they could already sense Peter's ugliness. But the next moment, something unexpected happened. It would have hit Peter's basketball. At this time, it actually hovered in the air. Made a muffled sound. The movement behind him caused Peter to look back and see Gwen's hand blocking a basketball coming from behind for him. What are you doing? Gwen grabbed the basketball and looked back at the three scoundrels behind him. The thug in the middle who threw the ball just now can only say indifferently for the sake of face. It's nothing, the ball accidentally ran out on its own. Really? Then come and get it yourself. Gwen stretched the ball out. Peter beside him reminded, forget it, Gwen. Gwen said, definitely, didn't I let him come and take the ball himself? The punk thought Gwen was afraid of him too, and smiled as he walked towards Gwen to catch the ball. Gwen instantly made a smashing ball. The little gangster was frightened and protected his head. But nothing happened. This also caused a burst of laughter from the students watching around, and then pointed at the gangster. Give me back. The little shouted angrily. Okay, take it yourself. 
Don't worry, I won't scare you anymore. Gwen reminded with a smile. The little hugged the ball as fast as he could, ready to take it away. But he found that he tried his best, but couldn't move half of the basketball in Gwen's hand. Even Gwen himself was dumbfounded. What do you know? Nothing. But the basketball seemed to stick to her hands. The little felt like he was being completely played by a girl in Gwen. Lost face in front of so many people. Ridiculed by so many. Immediately, blood was on the head, and he slapped Gwen and threw it down. Peter behind Gwen immediately reminded anxiously, be careful. What? The students watching around saw this scene. The timid girl shouted directly. But in the end, that slap did not fall. Because Luo Feng appeared in front of Gwen and grabbed the gangster's wrist. To deal with this kind of person, Luo Feng does not have too much nonsense. Squeeze in your hand. The sharp pain from the wrist caused the little gangster to let out a painful wailing. Ah. Gwen, are you alright? It's okay, I'm fine. Seeing Luo Feng come forward, Gwen said with a smile, actually, if you don't come, I can solve it. I'm great. That being said. But the look of joy on Gwen's face betrayed her. Obviously she was very happy that Luo Feng appeared to help her. Although she can solve it. But this feeling of being protected by Luo Feng seems like. Also very good. Luo Feng glanced at Gwen behind him and said with a smile, Okay, next time I'll give you a chance to beat up the bad guy. But leave it to me this time. Gwen nodded happily. Yeah. Peter, who was on the side, looked at Luo Feng who suddenly appeared with a somewhat complicated look in his eyes. He also wanted to protect Gwen like this. But he dared not take a step. Having said that, Luo Feng picked up the ball in Gwen's hand with the other hand. Very easy to get the ball out of Gwen's hands. The ball is good, go pick it up yourself. Luo Feng threw it hard, and the ball flew towards the school woods, and at the same time threw off the gangster's wrist. Now, you can get out. Feeling Luo Feng's powerful aura, the three of them did not dare to continue to attack, and they picked up the ball in the direction it flew past. Come on, it's almost time for class. After Luo Feng's reminder, Peter looked at his watch and remembered that Connors was still waiting for him in the laboratory. I'm sorry, I have to rush to the laboratory immediately. There is a very important experiment on the doctor's side. Gwen, Luo Feng, I'll go first. Go Peter, it just so happens that Luo Feng and I are going to class too. Looking at Peter's back, Luo Feng was thoughtful. Isn't Peter's spider ability awakening yet? But according to Peter's character. Even if he is awakening, he will not show his ability in front of people at will without wearing a spider suit. So Luo Feng didn't get into it. At the moment Luo Feng naturally didn't realize that Gwen next to him was the one who awakening the spider ability. Just now, thank you. Luo Feng. No, and didn't you say that you have the ability to solve it yourself, I definitely believe you. Gwen smiled. This is also a little secret between the two of them. Apart from Luo Feng, no one else knew that she could practice martial arts. The two walked towards the classroom talking and laughing. During the conversation with Luo Feng, Gwen also forgot about the abnormality that happened to her body from yesterday to now. After school. While Luo Feng and Gwen are in class. Inside the Connors laboratory. Peter has put on his white lab coat. In front of him, there are a total of three tubes of genetic reagents that have just been made. And a little white rabbit who just underwent amputation surgery. Peter, report on the rabbit's health. The result of the blood draw, there is no problem. The transverse section of the amputation is complete, and there is no infection, which meets the requirements of the trial. Okay, Peter. Get ready to start. This time, a total of three tubes of genetic reagents have been completed. As long as it is successful, our research will be completely completed. This time, Dr. Connors seemed very confident. Got it, doctor. Let's get started then. Peter put on gloves and picked up one of the reagent tubes. With a nod from Dr. Connors, Peter slowly pushed a tube of reagent into the rabbit's body. Okay, the next step is to wait. How long will it take? 10 minutes, the fragments of the regenerated DNA will be integrated into its DNA, and then we have to do it. Just wait. Dr. Connors said in a deep voice. 10 minutes, which might be fast in normal times. But now, for Connors and Peter, it is an extremely long time. Both of their hearts were raised in their throats. 
Although Dr. Connors is very confident, after all, this is the last experiment, if it fails. It's really over. Ten minutes, minutes and seconds passed. Eight minutes. Five minutes. Last minute. With the end of the last second. The amputee rabbit in the cage suddenly twitched. The position of the severed limb shook rapidly. Then it was as if something surged out from where the severed limb was. Soon, the new forelimbs of the rabbit are completely grown. Exactly the same as the original. Moreover, this rabbit was still in the cage full of energy and looked very healthy. Peter, hurry up. Understood, doctor. Peter immediately had the blood draw ready to analyze the rabbit's blood. Finally found. Everything is perfect. There is no abnormality in the rabbit's body, and there are almost no side effects. Looking at Peter's test results, he felt as if he was flying with joy. Success, we succeeded. Doctor, we succeeded. Dr. Connors took off his glasses and wiped the tears from the corners of his eyes excitedly. It finally worked. Reptile gene regeneration in vivo experiments were successful. This also means that soon he will be able to restore his hands. Dr. Connors scratched at one of the empty sleeves, knowing it wasn't over yet. Because there are still human experiments not carried out. And time is running out. Dr. Connors scratched at one of the empty sleeves, his eyes filled with determination. The excited Peter didn't realize this. Peter, put away the remaining two tubes of reagents. We are all too tired during this time and need a good rest. Clean up the lab, go home and get a good night's sleep, and we'll come back tomorrow for the final test summary. Okay, Dr. Connors. School gate. Connors watched Peter leave the school, and return to the laboratory after confirming that Peter was far away. Turn on the test video recorder at yourself. Peter, I'm sorry. I lied to you. What Osborne Industries and the school demanded is that they must produce a genetic medicine that can be used on humans within a week. Obviously, we're still short of human trials. But it's too late now, so you know. If my experiment is successful, you won't see this tape. But if it fails. Connors pointed at the camera and said his thoughts, as if explaining his last words, holding the medicine he just put away in his hand. Inject it on yourself without the slightest hesitation. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and support our channel.